All righty, we're back. We're back in action. It's a nice little Monday morning over here in Helsinki, Finland. I hope that everyone's doing uh, beautifully wherever you might be in this world. And I'm just going to give people a second here to kind of shuffle on in as we are getting ready for the good old show. As they say, let me just get my own links out here so we can get some, uh, some people, some, some nice viewers going on and down in the, uh, in the good old chats. And let me just get on over here, make sure everything is working as intended because you never know. You never know. You never know what might happen on stream. It's live. So, uh, so fuck it. We'll do it live, as they say. All right. Just getting this link out over here. Okay. Okay. Just making sure this is good. All right. Hyped on crypto. Come on. Get over here. There we go. There we go. Hosting myself. So that's also good as well. And we're live. Yes, indeed. Okay. It's looking nice. All right. I got my link. I'm going to post it over here to all my good friends. If you're over here, pay attention. It's about to start. It's about to go down. Okay, speaking of going down, hey, what's up, Paul Generis? How you doing, man? Not related to Paul Generis. He's not going down. He's going up. He's going up. He's going up in respect because, God damn it, Paul Generis is a is a is a is a damn good human being. Uh, let me just post this over here on the on Hyped on Crypto's um, channel, as that would be that would be nice to do. Just get some more people in there. All right, that looks good to me. Getting my chats ready over here, making sure that my charts look all well and good. Hey, what's up, Electric Bird? How you doing, my friend? How you doing? Good to have you in here. And again, guys, please do uh, please do let me know if anything needs to be you know uh, moved around or you know adjusted. You know, if uh, I don't know if you can't see someone well, just please do let me know. I'm always here, always looking for feedback and uh and until that i'll just keep on talking just keep on moving my goddamn mouth what's up c jackie how you doing mr jack over there in poland what's up man all right so i'm just gonna briefly start going on over this oh first things first i should probably disclose my my, my current position i am in a little bit of a long right here uh i entered at about 63 49 and a half essentially just kind of a risk reward play i do feel like we have a little bit of upside here um, as we do kind of crawl our way along this, uh, what I'm looking at as a bear flag right here. Sorry, this does not look right. Let's go over here to, uh, nope, <laughs> wrong chart. Get over here to Phoenix. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Yeah, still, still kind of crawling around our, our way in this, uh, in this bear flag. We do have that yellow 21 exponential coming in around uh, 60 or 64, 30 ish area on, uh, on Phoenix. So that might be where I close this position. Um, essentially, I'll be managing risk uh, in this lower time frame, right below, uh, pretty much right at my entry. Again, this is this is just one of those trades that I think is quite easy on the soul. It's a very easy risk reward um, trade where you know I'm buying on support right around here. As you could imagine, that this is some sort of a uh, you know what do you want to call this? Uh, 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 falling wedge, you know, uh, consolidation, what the fuck you want to call it. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter what you call it. The, the important part is that we have a well-defined support and a well-defined resistance. And anytime that we have something like that, well, there's typically a decent trade setup to be made. Um, with that in mind, though, keep in mind that this is an extremely low time frame. I mean, extremely low. It's an hourly. It's not that low, but uh, but 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 it is a lower time frame, and these things can uh, can fall apart quite easily on a lower time frame. So I always want to talk about and be open and honest about the uh, the limitations with looking at something like this. Let me just make sure that my chat is going on over here. See <laughs> Jackie, nice emoji. I like it. Love it. Uh, take uh, trading back above this uh, purple 200 exponential right here. If you were on if you're on the other night, you did we did kind of identify this uh, this divergence right here, and your oscillator is going. On. And since then, we did kind of consolidate a little bit lower. So again, anytime that you do have divergence, doesn't necessarily mean a full-on reversal, but it can signal uh, as soon as we get to this neutral zone right here, it looks like we are starting to find support. So I am leaning towards this being broken out to the upside here. And again, our next big resistance is somewhere around 64.20 ish, and above there is uh, 65.50, which is where I really want to get this thing. Um, let's go check out the weekly, by the way. Let's go check out the weekly. And the weekly. Uh, with, with, with with this weekly dilly right here, apologies. Um, <laughs> sorry, guys. I have a little bit of a potty mouth over here. I apologize about that. Um, but you know, with, with this with this weekly candlestick, um, <laughs> we've essentially we've essentially done nothing. And and by nothing, nothing isn't the right term. We've essentially had a consolidation uh, week um, as we do kind of tighten up this range after a little bit of a reactionary bounce down here. Now, things in the shorter time frames do look like we have a little bit of upside to me. Uh, down below here, I was just speaking with my good friend over on over on the uh, over on uh, Discord that this kind of looks uh, that this was kind of signals of a little bit of accumulation going on down here. And again, very, 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 very short time 
time frame. So I don't want to, you know, make this sound like we're going onwards and upwards. Again, I'm extremely bearish in the more longer run. Um, however, in probably for this next week, it does look like we have a little bit of up to go. Um, again, you know, these, uh, if you want to call these bull wicks below this area, you know, you, you can call it that you can call it whatever the fuck you want, uh, in this blue box area is your support. We've been kind of respecting that as we move along here. But again, I always want to have the, um, the context of this price action within mind, because as long as we're within the, or as long as we're trading under this resistance and above this support, you know, this is just a, a bear flag rising channel, uh, consolidation period. And to me, to me, that means I just want to be trading ranges, you know, being in and out quickly and also have the idea in the back of my mind that, you know, in, in, in a rising channel, they typically break out to the downside more often than not. So, yes, they can break out to the upside. It does happen. I've seen it. I've certainly seen it happen before. Not very often. But but as long as we're within this, I really, you know, I want to be extremely cautious with uh, with the way that I'm tr tr uh, taking trades and kind of positioning myself as these things can get sold into quite easily. We've already been living in this rising channel for about uh, over three weeks now starting over here uh, on this nice big fat girthy red candlestick um right here uh on the 22nd of uh of june and we've been yeah and we're actually on the uh, 16th of um of july right now so quite some time we can certainly stay in it for quite some more time again when you do have a rising channel you really don't have like an apex like you would with any sort of triangular uh consolidation formation so consolidation formation great great rhyming crown uh god damn it, i probably sound like such a meme right now um anyways my point with that is is that you know there's no sort of uh way to gauge time on how long you're going to be or could be stuck within this range as opposed to something like this where you know you have a very large uh, area of consolidation let me just kind of uh, get my green tri triangles out and flying around right here but you can see you know as it does get more and more full, it gets more and more likely to break. But it, you would have been forced to choose the direction right here at the apex is what it's called around uh, uh, August 11th. So Again, just just, just, just kind of random stuff to be aware of. Um, in the immediate term time frames, you know, I'm, I'm, I know a lot of people are calling this an invert, an inverted head and shoulders, but it's really not, man. You can't have your right shoulder trading below the low of your left shoulder um, on both your wicks and your uh, and, and your dilly bodies over there. Really, really, um, you know, one, one of those main things that I think a lot of people are getting wrong right now. Again, I don't want to be, you know, calling anyone out. God damn it, tone vase. Just kidding. Tone base probably has it right. I, I don't really listen to anyone anymore, to be honest with you. Um, <laughs> but uh, but 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 a lot of people are getting kind of like blindly bullish right here. And while I do think we have some upside, the the big point of this stream and the big point of what I'm probably gonna be saying for the next week is that we ain't out of the fucking woods until we get above this area right here, uh, especially this blue box area. I mean, if we did kind of crawl back into this green triangle area right here, then yes, we would have by definition a change behavior. Now uh, now I'm sure you know a lot of people might be a little bit more aggressive and saying that this 6750 area or 6800 area is kind of is kind of where you'd be making that decision yeah i mean you could make a little bit of a short-term decision there we did have a lot of short uh a, a lot of a lot of liquidity being hunted right here on this red dealing this powerful uh this powerful wick as well so again, um, you know, it, it's it's always it's always a nuanced perception is, is is what's best to have. So let me just kind of explain why this is my moniker for a change in market direction, so to say. And that essentially is is that, you know, we ha we have market phases going on here, and I and I apologize if I, <laughs> if you feel like I'm always repeating myself, but I feel like this is really really important because again, it's the higher time frames, it's, it's the macro market cycles and some macro trends where the real money is made. You know, I can scalp these ranges all day long, but I can also just make it fucking easy for myself and uh, and trade with the trend. The trend will be a friend if you let it be. Just let it be your friend. Don't fight it. Don't make it your friend of me because then it'll fuck you. Uh, <laughs> sorry, bad language. Um, anyway, so starting over here. We have about a three-year bull run, and again, we're going over all the market phases right here. And uh, and he, and here's your bull phase, just blindly bullish. This is where buy the dip is great. This is where hodl is great. This is, I mean, it's, it's okay, but uh, but but this is where Reddit is saying, guys, don't sell, just buy, just buy, and you'll be fine, guys. Don't worry about this <laughs> this magic internet money. It's not like any other trading asset. You can do whatever the fuck you want. You just sit on your ass, fucking masturbate all day. Sorry, bad language, but I know you fucking do it, okay? And <laughs> and you can make all the kind all kinds of money. Now, with that said. You know, yes, in this sort of market phase, that is where it sort of lulls you into that false sense of security, and uh, and where I see a lot of people with get uh, kind of get you know 
uh, lazy, lazy sorts of mindsets and lazy sort of uh, trading strategies being adopted. Myself, I actually did. I, I kind of fell into my own sort of uh, my own sort of troubles. Or I wouldn't say troubles right around here, but I was certainly. Um, it, it wasn't until we had that bull trap of, at about sixteen thousand five hundred where I said, "Okay, <laughs> we're not going to the fucking moon anymore. It's time to not be long." Um, so again, here, here's your bull phase right here. Then your then this is your topping phase slash reversal phase right here. If you're wondering where I kind of got my uh, my tip off that this was no longer a bullish market again just to kind of reiterate so you can uh, so you can reproduce this yourself in the future it was right here on this uh, on this break of 16500 once we once we started closing uh, big fat red dillies below there i said oh it's time to get the fuck out. Um, in, until that time, we actually really didn't even have a change of behavior. I know that sounds crazy because we did have about 50% down from 20,000 to 10,000 right here. But uh, but we were having crazy moves like that all the way through. Um, in fact, but you, but when you look at these exponentials, you can very easily see that, oh, it's uh, it really wasn't that. Uh, I mean, it, it, while it was aggressive, it wasn't uh, market shifting um, type behavior as it wasn't until over here where we really started trading below these exponentials and, uh, and, and doing something different. So you have your reversal phase right here. Sorry, I'm getting all sorts of sidetracked and then you consolidated between 6,000 and 12,000 right here this green triangle triangle area and that's also marked off by your uh, by your very orderly uh, fall off in volume right here another typical sign of consolidation and then more importantly when we broke this consolidation to the downside with this uh, with this red dilly poking through, you see that you see your first spike in volume coming back into the market. This tells this is telling me that there's that, that, that there's agreement within this market sphere and uh, and people are ready to live below um, or, or, or or people are ready to live or, or carry out a more prolonged bearish trend. So again, that's why I look at this area right here, this blue box area, as like the tipping point for the market. As long as we're below here, I don't see any reason at all whatsoever to be you know bullish. Uh, to seeing like all-time highs. By the same token, if we did start a closing uh, daily dillies above here, then yeah, I do think that we have a change behavior. I'd definitely go neutral on the market, maybe even bullish at that time. We'd have to kind of uh, you know assess it while we get there. Now, let me kind of talk about why I also think we might have a little bit of upside here. And just put this chart into your mind's eye. And sorry about this, guys. I'm, uh, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm over here on the chats. I am paying attention, but just always be aware that on the chats, um, sometimes you know uh, I, I can't always see comments. Um, I can't. Sorry, what I, I should explain this better. Uh, when when the comments um, disappear from visual from 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 the visual visible view on the stream um, on on the live stream, then I actually can't see them anymore. So if, so if I do miss your comment, please just add it again at the bottom. I'm happy to, to interact with anyone, answer anything. I'll talk about anything. Just say fucking hi, say hello, say how are you, or say fuck you. Just regale me in the con in the comments. That's also good as well. All right. So back now over here. Back now over here. Put this in. Put this chart in your mind's eye, as uh, we have th 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 this. By definition, is you know your market cycle, and it is uh, and it is something that I want to kind of present here. And right here, looking at our exponentials, that cyan line is your 100 exponential, and that purple line is your 200 exponential. Very powerful exponentials. And now look how price action has reacted off of um, uh, off of this cross right here. This is a very rare cross. You really don't see it too often in trading spheres, and it can be a um, it, it can be a big, 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 big. Um, uh, t uh, tip off on what the bots and algorithms are doing. Again, I know a lot of people who are skeptical of technical analysis are going to say something like, "Crown, what the fuck are these magical lines? You think that they can tell what the market's doing?" Well, of course not. It's not just. It's not that simple. And technical analysis is nowhere near a crystal ball, as some people might have you believe. If you if you're doing Elliott waves over there, shame on you. Just kidding. Of course, you can do whatever the fuck you want. Um, but uh, but that's kind of my problem with Elliott waves is that you know technical analysis isn't about telling the future. It's about it's about coming up with different scenarios and in uh, their trigger points and then and then making. Good Good probabilistic trades based off that. That's all it is. It's just no. It's no more magical than that. Okay, so back now over here before I ramble on any longer. God damn it, Crown! Can't you just stay fucking focused? Is um is, is right here. So you have the cross right here, and again the the reason why this is important is because it's telling us what the bots and the algorithms are switching on their programs to do. We had your traditional death cross right here with your green fifty five cross on the downside of your uh, of your purple uh, two hundred, which is a very powerful cross. And this is this is the exact kind of death cross that you're looking for where it kind of pulls it into the price action and then spits it out telling you that the bots are on the sell side they, it, the, the algorithms have switched to selling and uh, and over here the relevance of this is that it's basically intensified their selling as those as those moving averages do uh do start to slope a little bit more aggressively okay so get fucking on with it crown um 
so so we have this initial dump in price action right here uh dump down consolidate right here pump back up to your yellow 21 then dump back down just a little bit lower and then pump back up pump back up above your yellow 21 reach for your green 55 and then dump back down your yellow 21. okay memorize that put it in your mind's eye and we're gonna go into the goddamn time machine all right let's go do this back into time 1969 good old austin powers is right over here with fucking dark crown what the fuck he's saying um but uh but here is the only other time that this cross has ever happened in bitcoin's almost 10 year history let me repeat that bitcoin has been around for almost 10 years uh to the date and this is the only other time that we have seen these exponential movement averages cross within within the whole life within the whole life of of bitcoin itself okay so what is the relevance of this well again it tells us what the bots are doing what the algorithms are doing and their programming does have carryover and that is what and that is how you can kind of look at historical price action you know not only you know human psychology of course but also but also the way that these things are uh, are, are programmed just just by nature and um and we have very similar action you know it's it's not one-to-one -one, as some people would have you believe it's certainly not but we do have this major dump uh consolidate pump back up test your yellow 21 dump back down a little bit lower and uh, more aggressively here to be fair um, a lot more aggressively pump back up above your yellow 21 reach for that green 55 dump back down reach that kind of secondary low right here right and then pump back up putting in the bull trap of fucking death and decay because soon after that well we get the red dilly party all the way down destroying all sorts of bullish buttholes right there sorry derrieres um right there so again, I also want to point out this. Remember how we're in a little bit of a uh, of a rising channel bear flag in the current uh, price action of Bitcoin? Well, look at this. Look at this. We uh, we do actually have a bear flag broadening wedge, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Again, it doesn't matter what you what English word you you refer to this or, or used to refer to this. But what, what but what matters is is the support and resistance. And very clearly, we break this you know uh, the, this rising channel type formation to the downside. Very similar to what we have going on in the current price action. So. So keep in mind that we actually do find resistance right around the uh, right around the 100 exponential, that cyan line right there. Which guess what? You'd imagine that if we do exp extrapolate this a little bit further, and if we and, and we're making an assumption here, making a major assumption that oh, whoops, <laughs> whoops, sorry about that. Um, that we would, you know, it would start to kind of come down into here into the blue box territory, and that's likely where we do find resistance if this move does play out like that. So again, um, I don't want to make this sound like it is uh, it, it's a done deal. I'm just offering up ideas, and I'm and I want to. Be very thorough in the way that I explain this, as as it's as it's certainly possible is is what I want to get out uh, get get on over here, as um. As you know, I always want to be aware of, of all the situations present. Now, it goes without saying that we dump on on down on, onwards and downwards pretty pretty damn aggressively after that to our all-time low if we are going to follow that sort of 2014 area. So where would that equate to in, uh, in, in Bitcoin's current trajectory? Well, I'm glad you asked, Crown. <laughs> Am I, am I, am I losing my mind that much? Um, but, but fair enough. Okay, so with this, with this sort of bear flag rising channel formation right here, we actually can make a measure move off that. And if we just take the bottom of, the, of our flag bull to the top and we apply that to the perspective down uh, or, or breakdown area right around here. Again, we're making an assumption here, making a major, major assumptions being made. Uh, I want to be clear about that. But if we did break this down and confirm down, well, where does this me measure move take us? Oh, beautiful! Right into that blue box territory right there. A nice horizontal level uh kind of agreeing with that but hey is there anything else that points in that direction or is it just that of course of course there is i'm glad that i asked myself again <laughs> um oh my god i should stop drinking coffee jesus fucking christ um so over here over here, when we do pull it out, when in doubt, pull it out. It doesn't just work for sex, but it also works for charting. And uh, and we can see an inverted cup and handle right here, a very, very well-defined one as, as well. As we do have the right volume characteristics, we do have the right shape, we do have the right size. So it smells like one, it tastes like one, it smells like, or I don't know, it acts like one. What's what's the other fucking word? Um, then, uh, then it probably is one. And, uh, and, and more importantly, whenever I'm going over these formations, I'm always looking for ways that could not be true. Uh, just like this inverted head and shoulders over here was kind of denied uh, with this um with this move right here that liquidity run uh right there um, i'm always looking for, for 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 why things would likely be denied and with this measure move it would take us down if we do apply it right um making sure doing all my good drawings um and look at that it takes us right back into that blue box territory as well okay crown that's that's kind of cool but i'm not convinced yet what else do we have pointing down there well you don't need to be fucking convinced god damn it stop arguing with myself uh but you got your 786 fibonacci retracement coming in there as well okay what else can we find all right well, I'm, 
I'm getting more and more retarded by the fucking second. Jesus Christ. Okay, so over here on our on our on, on our Bitstamp chart, we have we have Bitstamp, the longest running Bitcoin exchange, going all the way back to the Genesis block of good old Bitcoin, and uh, and this is almost 10 years of price action and price history. And what do we have over here on the logarithmic time scale? Well, we do have a trend line that has been valid ever since the inception of Bitcoin, this dotted trend line right here. Uh, and it's never been broken in the, and again, the almost 10 year history of Bitcoin. Very cool. Now, what is, why am I talking about this? Well, You'd imagine that if we do extrapolate this forwards here, then it would very likely uh, it would very likely um, intersect with this horizontal area right here. Again, that 4,400 level that we just talked about. You know, with all those uh, all those uh, measured moves kind of pointing towards, and it would also point towards you know that 786 Fibonacci retracement. Also, your your purple 200 exponential does come around there as well. So just another thing, but. But onto this point about this uh, this logarithmic trend line. Well, in 2014, this market cycle over here, we did bottom along this uh, along this trend line. But more importantly, we we bottomed along the intersection of this logarithmic trend line uh, from the initial um, consolidation phase over here to our uh, horizontal area right here from the past market cycle. Now, if we do kind of extrapolate this for, uh, forwards over here, we can see that this all intersects again at that 4,400 region. More importantly, or maybe less importantly, this is more like th this is more like a tinfoil hatchet right here. So please do take this with uh, like five billion grains of salt. Go to the fucking beach um, or sand. I don't even know. Uh, <laughs> God damn the crown. Do you even make sense? Um, but over here. We can actually look at the time frame of of when this could happen. And again, time analysis is not something that I'm truly comfortable with. But this is quite interesting as we do have the good old Bitcoin ETF being announced on perhaps the August August the 10th. And by the way, that's a little bit misleading because uh, because if you actually do look into that paper, it doesn't necessarily uh, indicate that it's going to be decided for sure on August 10th. In fact, it says it could take another you know 40 or 45 days, whatever it might be. Anyways. The, what I'm trying to get out over here is that we actually do have all this, all, all these things converging at that 4,400 level around right there on the date at the bottom. You can see on 8, on 8, 6 and 8 and 8, 13 in between 8, 6 and 8, 13, because this is a weekly dildo chart, weekly dilly chart. And <laughs> God damn it. And, um, and, and that would likely be right around that August 10th date. So again, I'm just, I'm not saying this is going to happen one to one. I'm not saying that it's going to happen at all. I'm just saying that we do have some technical analysis ways bringing us down there. And I do think that it's a little bit interesting with the way that it kind of formulates around those, uh, around those, uh, th those dates that, that everyone seems to have their eyes on. Now, I do think that we actually could very, very easily go lower. In fact, I mean, I mean, this, this is why I have to be bearish overall is that, uh, is that I just look at the monthly right here and I'm like, holy shit, man, is there anything bullish about this chart? Well, you got a pair of uh, tweezer top dillies right there, consolidation right there, and then breaking the consolidation to the downside. And it's pretty damn. I mean, it's hard. It's really hard to argue against this, you know. As a technical analyst, it's hard to argue against this. I'm not saying it's going to happen, but it's certainly possible that we that you know it's this <laughs> just, just just by traditional metrics, it's it's really not that crazy to think that it could come all the way back down here around 1200 1300 uh credit to jen colada for always pointing that out um although i actually do think a little bit lower um so again you know be be aware of these sorts of things our human brains our human minds have a very difficult time with interpreting you know big ranges but when we put into a historical perspective you can see very easily that you know this is you know it, it's always it's, it's on the table as uh, so to say it's on the table all right Okay, let me uh, let me get back on over to the uh, to the lower time frames. Put back on these uh, these nice little um, these nice little trend lines over here, and maybe I'm going to be getting uh, shake, shaken out of this uh, position pretty damn soon. It looks like we are selling down as this hourly dilly does uh, does kind of get put into place. We got another uh, seven seconds, f six seconds, five seconds. Let's see what Bitmex is doing. Bitmex is selling a little bit harder actually. In fact, you can see right here um, on this red dilly, kind of uh, rejecting um, uh, this th th this price action from this resistance right here. Uh, is you know it, i mean it's not huge it's certainly not huge but it is you know it's, it's consolidation volume and it is uh and it is kind of telling us eh, we're not we're not quite ready just yet also putting us right back below that uh that 200 exponential right there in fact i think it's time for me to get out of this damn position because well well now nah, I'll, I'll just let it hit my stop again i do have a stop loss about a few bucks away uh, i'm not really interested in taking a loss in this trade um i mean who is it's like say say something new crown god damn it um but yeah at the end of the day this is kind of what I'm looking at. Um, this is kind of what, what I'm looking at over here. All right. Okay. Great. <laughs> Just making sure my phone is going absolutely crazy at all hours of the day. I apologize about that. Okay, guys, back over here to the uh, to the good old comments. Let's see. LBX says, "Hey, Crown, interesting chart for ETC on Binance. I don't even own ETC, but I'm interested in in your read on it." All right. Yeah. Let's go check it out, man. I'm not going to look at Binance because. Um, 
fuck that exchange, man. Uh, sorry, it's just... <laughs> I, I just don't like Binance, man. Uh, it's not very Safu, in my opinion. Anyways, um, over here on, on, on Ethereum Classic on Finex, we can see very clearly that, yes, we're doing some sort of a, uh, some sort of a you know, rising channel, rising wedge, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It doesn't really matter to me. Again, I, I don't care what English word you use to identify this. I care about the support and resistance. And it does look like we do have the right, uh, the right volume characteristics in the right shape of, yeah, I guess this would be concern, uh, considered a, a rising wedge in the way that it's formulated right now. Uh, as long as we're holding this support right here, it is, I actually do think it's okay. Uh, $16.30 is the error to hold. If I, do, if I were taking a trade right here, I'd have a stop loss right around there, like $16.20, $16.10, whatever the fuck it might be. Um, and then you do have your 200 exponential coming right around here. So if I was taking this trade, I'd be looking somewhere right around here. Yes, you do have resistance right here at about 17 and a half bucks, uh, but $18.74 about is, is kind of, is kind of the next big area of resistance as you do see that that daily 200 exponential starting to line up with this uh with this nice horizontal level as well again you know ethereum classic can't, i can't get too excited about this thing until we get above this area right here until we get above uh 23 bucks and uh 32 cents and a half or, or whatever the fuck it might be um can't get too excited about it from from a technical analysis standpoint. In fact, I really can't get too excited about this thing in general because this looks like a shit ton of distribution going on right here. A little bit of a throwback going on in this area right here. Then another, another. You know, it, it's just it's just this bullish news being thrown into the it, being thrown to the gauntlet uh, into the gauntlet in a bearish market. So uh, so while we might have a little bit of upside, I want to be extremely cautious and I always want to keep it keep one eye on Bitcoin over there. If Bitcoin starts start starts selling down, it's like that Ethereum Classic well as well. If Bitcoin does does play. Out this week, you know, uh, to the upside, like like we think, you know, it it, it might, it, it looks like it's certainly possible. Um, then, um, then, uh, then, 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 uh, then Ethereum Classic likely will as well. So yeah, man, that's what I have to say about that. Again, watch those levels because uh, that's kind of where I see, um, that's kind of where I see the the interest in that thing. All right, back now over here to the uh, to to the Finex uh, 15 minute. <laughs> Sorry about this, guys. I don't want to I don't want to represent myself as saying that you know uh, you should be trading lower time frames. I'm just kind of just kind of want to look at something on screen. Oh, sorry about. Oh, okay, great. All right, back on over here to the comments. Uh, Electric Bird says caffeine induced psychosis. Don't stick your dilly in cray cray. Oh, you motherfucker, you just went there. By the way, guys, uh, by the way, guys, if, if your comment does disappear from visible view, I, it's not that I want to skip it or anything like that. I want to read everyone's comments. It's just uh, it's just I can't see it anymore. So please do just add it again. and I'm happy to uh, to get to it. All right. Derek M. What's up, man? How you doing? Crown's back on the fiend. Oh, you motherfucker. I am. Actually, I am. It feels good, man. I feel FGM, bro. Um, but yeah, you know, it's, uh, it's I feel like it's just kind of necessary right now. Um, been doing a lot of bit, a lot of work. So I, I can need that that extra that extra little boost of um, uh, of, of energy over here eli says hey what's up what's up eli how you doing man hey crown maybe uh maybe just showing off my inexperience here but would the bots trading bitcoin have been as advanced in 2014 as they are these days um well i mean uh no no because people are always getting better and better over time right but i can tell you that yes they were pretty fucking good in 2014 as well again i was trading equity options at that time i can tell you in that realm they are extremely extremely sophisticated in fact they are the things that they can do um would <laughs> What 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 would really um what would really uh what's it called um uh what oh, Jesus Christ I just lost my space would really uh would really blow your mind man would really blow your mind at the end of the day man these things are um these things are are programmed in in, in part by some of the best of the best of the best programmers in the world the best of the of the developers in fact I can tell you from experience that you know the what what prop shops and what big firms really want nowadays are not trade I mean they 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 do want some traders to give like the logic but what they really want are are programmers so if you know your shit in that in that way then goddamn man good shit all right uh back now over here um so yeah you know again eli you know everyone's known about the exponentials for you know 30 fucking years man it's, uh since they were ca calculated by hand you know back in the day in like the 70s or 60s um so again it's it's not like this is new information over here and those inputs are very you know very 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 common so that's why i believe that they do have relevance over time and then also again man you know when we are talking about long-term price action like this right here you know we're not really looking at a chart of bitcoin we're we're, we're looking at a chart of human emotions man this is is human emotions you know we, uh, right here we're charting fear of missing out greed exuberant irrationality and then right here we're charting you know fear uncertainty doubt that kind of shit so again man um 
you got to be careful with that. You got you got to be careful with that, and um, and uh, and just keep that in mind at all times. You know, I've found that market cycles are pretty consistent amongst any uh, amongst most um, trading spheres, so to say. Meaning that you know, even even in equity options, in commodities, in magic internet money, and, and forex, you know, these these things do have uh, a lot of weight to be played out over time. All right, back now over here to the comments. Let's see, uh, Derek, are you able to make it to Ottawa meetup in in the twentieth? Oh yeah, definitely go check out uh, DJ Meat Pops because uh, DJ. Meet Popicles meet up over there. By the way, what's up, DJ Meat? Uh, I did not. Uh, John, that was in Vancouver a couple weeks ago. Buy at monthly support <laughs> for maximum financial opportunity. You know what's crazy, Alfred? You know what's crazy, man? You know, Alfred, Alfred, you're gonna understand this, and I don't want to scare other people in here, but you know, but 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 I just want to speak specifically to Alfred right now. I mean, if if you do want to listen, if you're a hodler, just turn your ears away, turn your eyes away, and, and I'll spare you this, and I'll spare you this right now. But hey, you know, we're actually. <laughs> You know what, Alfred? You know what's funny about this is that we're actually not even in a bear market by definition over here. If you look at the monthly, it wouldn't be until we start trading like below here, below, below, well below a thousand that we actually enter bear market territory just by definition. Because right here, it's I mean, the way that you can look at this from a longer term perspective is is a is a big correction. Now, yes, the percentages are are really, 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 really aggressive, but uh, but by definition, you don't have a bear trend until you have like a prolonged downtrend, you know, past past your former market cycle right here. So if you really did start, you know, violating this area right here. Here, which again, I disagree with you, man. I believe that strong that strong monthly support is actually 1150 right here. Um, it's not until you go below there that 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 you would actually enter enter that that phase. So again, I'm just kind of using these words as more, you know more people are going to be comfortable with calling this as a bear trend right here. But you know, if you really do pull things out and get the full you know 10 year perspective. It's actually it's actually not so simple now, is it? Okay, uh, back now over here. Derek M says, "Yeah, I didn't I didn't even know uh, about it, or I probably would have checked it out." Well, fair enough. Uh, speaking of tinfoil hats, it looks like the six of the month mark uh, month market reversal is over. Uh, says Eli. Well, let's go check it out, man. Let's go check it out. So we had the sixth of um, of July right here, or sorry, the sixth of July right here, which essentially did kind of put us back to the downside. So. I mean, no, uh, not not quite just yet. We do. I mean, we have basically. If if we are going to play out the sixth meme of the month, which again, I'm not sure that I do believe it. Do believe in it, although it has been playing out for the last six months. Um, that uh, that 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 would imply that we very likely do not get back above 67.50 area. So again, you know, just ju just just be aware of that if that is going to be if that is going to play out. But again, I, you know, t that that sort of thing more more tinfoil hat than anything. I wouldn't really put too much weight on it overall. All right, back now over here to the uh, to the comments and let's see. DJ Meep says, "Crown, I'll paste my chart in the cave again for the one hour candles uh, with my magic." curved line again the price bounces off my magical line <laughs> all right let's get that lag that magical line out and flying around i'm gonna see that shit right now dj meat uh let's see uh, okay, so DJ Meat's got it right over here. I'm gonna bring it into uh, into visual view. Look at that, guys. DJ Meat Popsicle has done it once again. <laughs> there, there is a line, and it is respecting the line. Which line is it? Well, it's probably. I'm, I'm guessing you're talking about this one right here. So yeah, man. You know, I have, I have the same thing drawn in there as well, and I do agree with it on the shorter time frame. So you know, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, I'm gonna get back over here and take this off just in case, just in case if anything, uh, anything, anything embarrassing pops up over, the, over there. But hey, thank you for sharing that, Mr. DJ, DJ Meat. As, um, as, uh, as, as you know, you, I mean, you are right by definition right now, and and I, and I mean, I, I see it myself. I, I do agree with that. I mean, essentially, what you're plotting out and, and what essentially agrees with you as well is your exponentials right here, just coming in line um, with with that area. So, uh, whoops, there we go. Uh, let me get back over here to uh, to Finex and get. Let me get back over here to the comments. As uh, there it is. All right. Right, there we go. Okay, funds are too safu on Binance. It's scary. It <laughs> it sounds extremely scary. Hey, hey, Bitcoin Ascent, how you doing? How you doing, Rocky? Uh, Bitstamp data doesn't go back to the Genesis block. The Genesis block was January third, two thousand nine. Bitcoin didn't even didn't have a price until May twenty second, twenty ten. But Bitstamp, okay, so okay, my okay, I, I apologize about that, Rocky. I did get the I did get the uh, the the definitions wrong right there. It doesn't go back to the Genesis block, but as as soon as we actually have price data for it, price history, then yes, um, that that then yes, it looks like Bitstamp does start to pick it up. All right, so you're saying you're saying the twenty eleventh. Let, let, let's let's go verify that really quickly. Uh, 2011 so we're right over here yeah you're right oh it is 2011 so yeah it started about a, a year later after that but fair enough you know still again mo mo most of the price action um you know represented within there and that's kind of what i want to be having my eyes on so so fair enough rocky as always man as always a goddamn pleasure for uh for for setting me straight because crown is not being thorough right now okay uh let's see dg meat says uh B bitcoin pizza day woot <laughs> age of the age of the geek baby that's right baby 
<laughs> what's up, Lando? How you how you doing, by the way, Lando? How you doing, man? Good talking with you earlier. Uh, Crypto Venture says, what's the main difference between exponential moving averages and just regular moving averages? Okay, so this is a question that I get a lot, and the and the very basic answer is that exponential moving averages put more weight on the recent price action, and regular moving averages are quite are quite literally just you know just a calculation over time. Whereas again, exponentials put more weight on the recent price action. So so I like to use exponentials. I just feel like I, I feel more comfortable with them. That's what I you know grew up learning. Grew up learning. But you know again, coming from my sort of background as a uh, uh, or, uh, as a market maker in equity options, when I was when I was around those sorts of fears, when I was around those sorts of people, the big thing that 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 uh, that people were using over there, and that I was taught, and what I have the most experience in is is exponentials. All right, back on over here to the uh, to the comments, and let's see. Um, 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 DJ Meat says, Crown, you keep moving your lines, yet my magical line has never moved since I placed it over one and a half months ago. I know it's, I know it's got no TA to it uh, to actually back it up, but it is hodling. <laughs> well, fair enough, man. Yeah. I mean, well, do I really move? Do I really keep on moving my lines? Uh, we do have this one right here. We do have this one right here, which is kind of what I'd be going off of. But yeah, man, that's why I use exponentials. They're going to be, they're going to be kind of be taking that care of that for me. You can see right here that they do, they are starting to line up with your area right there. And again, it just, it looks like we had a little bit of accumulation going on right here. And now we're going to see if we're going to um, play, uh, play it out right, right here. So again, uh, you know, always, always be, always be aware of that guys. Always be aware of that as, uh, as, as you know, your trend lines, uh, <laughs> trend lines were made to be broken. So, you know, you know, th uh, the reason why we use them is because it gives us good, um, you know, good, good historical relevance to maybe not that historical relevance, but you know, good, good price action relevance to kind of make good, um, probabilistic trades made off of them. All right. Um, uh, okay. All right. Okay. Um, let's see. All right. Electric bird said, Hey, what's up electric bird? How you doing, man? Uh, crown your thoughts on ma on mainly trading ma uh, major trend reversals, pullbacks, trading range reversals and breakouts. Um, I think, you know, if, if you don't have that much time, if you don't, if you just want to make this easy for yourself, then yeah, that's, that's really the best way to do it. Again, you know, I kind of do that, do it the same way myself actually in that, um, you know, for full disclosure, again, like I stated at the beginning of this, uh, of this stream, you know, I, I pretty much took out about 75% of my trading, um, of my trading account right here. Uh, when I, I realized that we were likely reversing it and not doing this this moonshot business anymore. So right around here, you know. So so yes, I do believe that there is there there is a lot to be said about that because at the end of the day, you know, trade you can make trading easy for yourself or, or hard on yourself, and it's already pretty fucking hard. So um so again, man, yeah, and and especially like if you don't have that much time to devote to learning this sorts of stuff or or just that that much time to devote to actually like you know trading it trading things and managing them, well. Well, then that's that, that, then that is kind of like that, or, or at least that would be my, um, my sort of main, main, you know, route of attack, if you will. All right. Back now over here to the, uh, to the, to the more recent price action. Um, okay. All right. Sharon says, uh, what are we trying to see with these EMAs? Well, we're essentially looking at, at moving averages and, uh, and, and the, and the real relevance of EMAs is essentially the way that bots and algorithms are programmed off of. And a lot of them are programmed with these sorts of things in mind. Yes, of course they do take into, into consideration other, other elements and other data points, of course. Um, but exponential moving averages are the way that you can kind of understand what the bots and what the algorithms are doing. Are they on the buy side? Are they sell, are they on the sell side? Where are they defending? Where are they, where are they attacking? You know, this sorts of, these sorts of things all have great relevance. And over time, it really does help smooth out price action. Um, okay. Zoran Jovic says, what is your timeline on reaching that, that Bitcoin bottom? I hear, uh, hear even summer 20, 2019. Uh, I kind of covered that earlier, but, but just to reiterate, well, we would, you know, okay. It, if, again, major, major assumption being made here. If this 4,400 region was going to be the bottom, then... Then it would likely happen actually next month, um, next month, uh, you know, uh, mid mid August to uh, to early October at the latest. Again, right around here is where I'd be looking, um, and uh, and we do have a lot of data points converging along that area as well. So um, so yeah, man, that's what I'd be thinking on that. However, however, if we did play out the more bear scenarios down to this area right here, then that would imply you know uh, late late 2018 about you know mid November to uh, to to late December uh, area right around here um, so yeah you know again it's it's gonna depend on what we actually do right now this is obviously the first the first and most um, and the most convincing point to me however it doesn't mean that we can't move lower and we do have 
things pointing lower down here and obviously the monthly as well. Um, the, the monthly as well would likely take, if we are, if we are going to get all the way down to, you know, 1100, 1200, if that did even happen, then yes, it would happen most likely next year. Um, in like the, at like the end of the first quarter, as you can see, some, sometime in like late April would make sense. Again, I'm not saying that's going to happen. I'm just saying that, you know, if we did get there and if that was still kind of the trajectory of the market, that's where I'd be looking. Um, as always, guys, you have to take the market one leg at a time. And, um, and, uh, and the way that I see this right now is that, um, is that you know, that 4,400 region has a lot of things pointing towards it. Uh, 29 to 2,500 also has a lot of things pointing towards it, but obviously, you know, one step at a time, of course. So yeah, that's what I'm looking at right now. Okay, back onto the uh, current price action. And let's see what we got going on in these comments over here. Okay, DJ Meat says, uh, Zorin, if you believe that Twitter and YouTube justify the market, you're very young into crypto, I think. Uh, whoops. Okay. All right. Oh, I, I think I, I think I missed some uh, some 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 comments. All right. There we are. A zero one two eight says, why are we gaining shorts off practically no price action? Well, this is what makes me think that we probably do have a little bit of upside right here. We've been gaining a shit ton of shorts in the last. Uh, sorry, a crap ton of shorts in the last. Um, in the last. Uh, what is it? About ten hours. Oh God damn it! Now I'm just I'm about to get shaken out of my position. Um, since right around here at around uh, yesterday, yesterday starting around 12 a.m. my time, uh, which would be uh, right here. So a lot of people were shorting right around here, uh, indicating that a lot of you know a lot of these shorts are actually already underwater by a little bit. They probably do have stop losses somewhere right around here. I'd imagine around 6,400. Um, so you know, always keep that in mind. With that said, with that said, I do want to uh, I do want to say that you know when when people th when people do um, you know put uh, you know put put uh, put a lot of short ups shorts up right at right at support. It typically does lead to a nice little shakeout. As you know, it's it's a lot easier to shake out shorts over aggressive shorters than it is to to shake out over aggressive longs. And we are still maintaining this this sideways and perhaps uh, perhaps bullish consolidation right here. So yeah, that's what I'd be thinking about that. Look like I did just get shaken out of my position. Oh no, it's over. God damn it. I thought that position was going to make me rich, but now I'm poor. Now I'm eating fucking noodles over here. Sorry about that. Anyways, back on over here to the comments. Uh, let's see. Richard, Richard Perot says, oh wait, uh, <laughs> Zorin says bottom is in, or sorry, DJ Meat says bottom is in. Well, <laughs> well, yeah, that's right. that's right, guys. We don't need capitulation anymore. We can just move onwards and upwards. <laughs> DJ Meat Popsicle here to save the day. Uh, Zoran says, no, it's not, LOL. Uh, Richard Pro says, hey, what's up, Richard? How you doing, man? Good to meet you. How's it going, mate? I know TRX is shit, uh, shit coin, but can you do some tea on it, please? Yeah, man, of course, man, of course. And, and, and you know, and, and again, guys, when it comes to discussing the underlying fundamentals and uh, and charting, they're two completely different things, in my in my opinion. Uh, tip, sometimes they will they will reflect each other, but, uh, but at the end of the day, if you're going to be a trader, you can't can't care about what name is over here. The name doesn't matter. All that matters in pr is price, volume, and time. And the way that I look at this is that is that Tron actually is having a little bit of a pick me up over here, uh, if you will. And in fact, if I do, man, this is why I hate diag. This is why I fucking hate diagonal trend lines. But if I do look at it like that, then maybe we are in some sort of a falling wedge consolidation right here, and we did just break it out to the upside. However. However, you can see right here that's your purple 200 exponential, and we are we're we're kind of we're kind of struggling around it. So I really can't get too excited as long as we're closing dillies below this area right here. If we can close a daily dilly above uh, what is this 550, then yeah, I think that we got a nice little run uh, to this next resistance somewhere right around 600 uh, ish area. Um, but until that happens, until that happens, I'd be very very careful with this. Now I do like the buy volume going on down here. It shows that people are getting starting to get interested, and it looks like we are kind of you know stair stepping our way upwards and onwards. So I do like that as well. This you know this. This, this, this doesn't look too bad. Um, so yeah, man. Uh, yeah. Again, you know, your, your big areas is right here is what, is what I'd be looking at right here. As long as we're below here, I, I don't want to get too excited about it, but if, but if we do start closing daily dillies, dillies above there, then yeah, I think you got a nice little move all the way up to about 600 ish. Um, and may, maybe you even do reverse it. I mean, overall it does look like, are uh, like, is this okay? I mean, it's not it's not a, it's not a beautiful consolidation but it's it's it works i suppose but again that that purple line is going to be the big area of uh, of of your next battle so so to say all right back now over here to the comments and let's see uh, DJ says, "Love you, Crown. Wish we had BBs together. Oh God damn it! How beautiful would they be, DJ Me Popsicle? And what would we name them? And God damn it, are they going to be Bitcoin ATMs or I don't know? I don't know what 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 kind of monstrous monstrosity I'd fucking produce. Uh, Bitcoin or sorry, uh, Rocky says when pimping my sister out. To <laughs> Rocky, God damn it! This is a family friendly channel. You're talking about pimping out your sister. <laughs> Was she good? I'm bad." 
comments to make, Crown. Bad comments to make. But Rocky, you should know this information if you're going to be a pimp. Um, Zorin says, we are in delusion, uh, delusion of phase of bubbles. Just look at Twitter and YouTube. All you see is moon videos. That shows we are far from the bottom. Yeah, I, I would agree with that. I would agree with that. There's way too much uh, ignorant bullishness going on right now. A lot of people have become Wyckoff experts recently saying that this whole phase has been accumulation. It's not at all whatsoever. In fact, it's it would be it would be quite literally suggesting the opposite if you do know your Wyckoff theory. Um, and uh, and again, I always want to be as balanced as possible. And I'm always looking for 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 ways to show me of upside. But really, the best thing I can do right now is that is that big bull trap of 2014. That's the best that I can can come up with. And you know what? All the Twitter people, all the YouTube people, and all the fucking trading view people are going to be extremely excited by that. I'm, I can tell you that right now. Or I mean, they probably will, right? You know, as everyone gets excited anytime we have a fucking $100 dildo, dilly, dilly. Um, then, uh, then you know, you you do get the you do get you get you get those people kind of coming out the woodworks over there. Oh, let me make sure that my uh, that my mic is working well. Okay, yeah, it's it's working over here. Great. All right, and all and as always, guys, please please you guys be the ones to let me know. Um, you know, if if, if anything's not working for you over here, I'm always happy to adjust things and uh, and yeah, make it better for everyone. Of course, of course. All right, back onto the comments and yeah, let's see who do we got over here. Um um um. Uh, DJ Meat says Zorn, if you believe that Twitter and YouTube justify the market, you're very young into crypto i think i could be wrong i'd be open to discussing this further with you in private <laughs> i like this private discussion let me get in uh zoran says please do elaborate why you think this is the bottom um i'm guessing you're talking to dj meat i believe it due to previous bottoms we had uh three times well fair enough i i don't quite see it myself i don't quite see it myself um lol every time we dipped under six thousand finex printed uh finex finex printed tether um I don't really know too much about that, to be honest with you. There are other reasons that you could argue are, are personal reasons, just the same as I argue your reasons are personal. So I guess you could say that I don't have much proof, uh, but I argue the same to you. Yeah, fair enough. At the end of the day, man, at the end of the day, we're all just sharing uh, points of view over here. And it's and it's good for discussion to have dissenting opinions. When we get together as a community and discuss these sorts of things and discuss, you know, you know, maybe maybe uh, fallacies with what we're thinking or also, you know, uh, you know, good things about what we're thinking, then we can all come together to, to gain a better understanding. That's really the benefit of being in a community like this all right um 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 let's see nightbot's telling us to to drink some water drink some goddamn water guys uh <laughs> richard says thanks mate all good man all good hyped on crypt dem dillies dough <laughs> You like that hyped on crypto, don't you? Uh, DJ Meat says, we would name our son Thor and our daughter, hey, you... <laughs> no, we'd name our daughter abortion. No! Oh my God, crown bad. We'd not name her that. We'd name her beautiful angel. Angel hair. Um, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> it's not intended to offend. Okay. <laughs> oh, gotta love it, man. Gotta love it. Okay. Uh, let's see. Let's see. Okay. And by the way, guys, yeah, I'm always, I'm always happy to, to talk about dissenting opinions here. As always, man, that's what this, that's what this stream is for. You know, I'm going to be wrong at times too. I mean, maybe I'm wrong all the time, but I just want to finish that sentence. You know, don't you be fucking arrogant over here. All right. Uh, let's see. Patrick says, uh, what do you think of is the future of altcoins? I think most of them are probably going to die in the, uh, in the foresee not the foreseeable future, but it probably in the next couple, couple of two, uh, two or three years. Here's the problem, guys. Here's the problem is that Bitcoin, Bitcoin has plenty of downside to play out if it wants to. Um, again, we've been talking about the, you know, 4,400 at, at the very least. Um, I mean, you know, it could, it could turn around here. I mean, again, at, you know, it could be that we start closing daily dailies above this area right here, about 7,400. If we did that, then then yeah, this could be the bottom. Um, but you know, it, but but again, there's a lot more things pointing lower. You know, again, the 4,400, you know, 20, 25, 2,600, and then and then 1,100, 1,200. Um, and if that did happen, you have to wonder to yourself, where would these alts go? Where do they have to go? I mean, I always bring up this one right here. Good old NCash, the fucking future of Bitcoin, right? And NCash, I mean, this thing has just been making new lows after new lows. This is your definition of a shitcoin right here. Um, at the end of the day, man. At the end of the day, you know, there's there's no there's no limit to how low these things can go. It's just like sex. You know, it's it's always lower than you. Think think and um and the way that i look at this is that you know i as i have to as i have to ask myself okay if bitcoin if bitcoin plays out this the, the this majorly bearish scenario where the fuck is this thing gonna go it's already you know it's already blasted through every goddamn support it's ever had uh it's i mean 
uh, zero isn't that far away, I suppose. But uh, but yeah, um, at the end of the day, you know, there there is a lot of charts that look like this. Let's go look at another one, another another former crowd favorite from uh, from from a few months ago, and Nano just low after low. And again, I want to take a second to talk about this, um, as you know, it's a common fallacy I, uh, that that I've had myself when I first came into trading, and that I see a lot uh, perpetuated a lot as well. In that you think, hey, it's gone so goddamn low, it can't go any lower, guys. It's it's gone low enough already. There's there's nothing else to it. Um, no, 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 no. That is 100% the wrong way to be thinking about, at least in my experience. That's led to a lot of pain, a lot of hurt in my experience. And let me tell you why. There's a saying that we had on the floor of New York Stock Exchange, ARCA, and that was that the weak get weaker and the strong get stronger. And something like this and most altcoins that look like this are weak. And when Bitcoin shows weak weakness, they will likely get weaker. And when Bitcoin shows strength, well, they barely even they barely even fucking rally with it, which is, which is also a sign of weakness. So again, man, and um, a lot of things look like this and the one that we just previously looked at. And that's why I don't want to be, uh, you know, uh, you know, I'm, I'm really not looking forward to many of these things. Now, with that said, there's probably going to be a handful of altcoins that are going to be extremely successful over time. Do I know what those are? No. <laughs> I don't fucking know, um, but but I can tell you, you know, you can't you can't just use blanket stains, statements for everything, right? Of course, there's going to be exceptions. Of course, there's going to be you know you know random things that happen in in, in the sphere. Of course, you always have to have an open mind. Maybe you know it's it's always possible. It's it's probably not probable. But it's probably not probable. It's not probable, but but it is possible. You know, someone comes along and they make something better than Bitcoin. But you know, then again, it's like Bitcoin has the most history. It has the most. It has the best developers. It has the most activity. All this great stuff, and uh, you have to be really be wanting to yourself well <laughs> well <laughs> all right well they got a lot of work to do i'll put it that way they got a lot, a lot of work to do but you always have to you always do have to keep an open mind okay all right uh let's see zoran says are you familiar with tony bays he is calling 1300 bottom since january yeah man i i am familiar with him um i don't really tune into him too much because i fucking hate his voice hi guys this is tone bays and we have the td9 here and everything is shit coin besides bitcoin but now we go to the bottom floor now um yeah man he uh he, he's an interesting guy uh i think i think he's one of the few guys who's been pretty damn bearish along with me um however i would say this you know any and, and again this is not th this is not a a directed remark at him, but in general, whenever I see someone who's who's talking about analysis on YouTube or Twitter or whatever fucking social venue it might be, and they don't trade themselves or verify themselves trading, then that is a big, 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 big red flag in my experience. So I just kind of want to offer that up. Again, I'm not saying that at that uh, at that at anyone in particular, but you know, but you know, you always do have to wonder, right? Um, so again, uh, so so yeah, I am familiar with him, and yeah, I do see that, man. I I do see that it is it is possible and you know he is right you know it's it's not it's certainly not out of the question man uh just by your traditional dilly uh dilly formations monthly is pretty damn clear it's saying you know usually you do come back down and revisit this area right here so yeah man yeah um <laughs> all right fair enough all right back now over here to the uh to the lower time frames and back over here to the comments all right, uh, let's see, let's see. Uh, hey, Z-Rex, what's up, man? How you doing, Mr. Z-Rex? Good to have you back in here. Check out uh, CF, CF, uh, CFI. Yeah, man, so let's go check it out. What is this, futures again? CFI. Uh, no, oh, sorry, that's VFI. Sorry about that, can't type. Uh, can't do much, actually. Oh, you're, is it Euronext? Is, it, is this what you're looking at? Or do you want to look at CFI on the dollar? Please do let me know, man. I'm, I'm over here at the bottom of the comments. I'm going to guess you want to look at this one. Um, or this does not even trade. So I'm guessing you want to look at the other one, man. Um, maybe it's CFI BTC. Uh, so please, oh yeah, Cub found it. I, I think I heard about this one not too long ago. It sounds sounds legit. It barely fucking trade. Look at this, man. This is an hourly and you have gaps every goddamn which way. Uh, this thing barely trades, man. This thing barely trades. It's way too new to do any sort of uh, analysis on. Maybe, maybe the other exchange has better um, better price history. Let's go over here to Trex and do we? Yeah, we do. Okay, so we can we can chart this. Yeah, Th this has this has enough. Uh, this has enough history right here. And okay, so we what did we do over here? Ah, wow, indeed. So we did have a throw over around here, bought, brought it back up, then sold it right back down. Jesus Christ, just brutal, man, just brutal. Uh, these moves on some of these altcoins are just so nasty, so fucking nasty. Um, it does look like to me that... It does look like to me that we're actually under pretty pretty damn big pressure right here. Uh, as long as we're below 5.30 sat, um, it looks kind of nasty to me, man. I mean, I'm sure people are looking at this and saying, guys, it's a, uh, it's a falling wedge consolidation. And, you know... 
let, let, let's just kind of let's just kind of dissect this uh, if, if it's even possible. And we got this right here and this right here. Uh, this this would kind of indicate that we've already broken out of it. But this is why I don't like falling wedges. They 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 typically don't do what you think they're going to do. They kind of get sold into a lot of the time is what I'm trying to say. And uh, and right here, you know, it's you know you're already coming into pressure after this after this uh, break right here being held right at your former resistance and uh, not even getting past your 55 exponential, which is pretty damn weak. Um, so again, at, you know you know I see resistance right here at about 530, then right here at about 569, and then right here at about you know 630 ish. Um, and, and if you could, if you could start closing dillies above, uh, six, six thirty, six forty ish, whatever that might be, then yeah, you might have a little bit of a run to be put in, uh, I'd see the next big resistance come in somewhere right around here. It looks like somewhere right around here, which would be a nice risk reward trade to be taken. But you know, again, I don't like how it's acting right here, man. It's, uh, it's, it's certainly weak when other things have been, you know, getting a little bit of attention recently, it has not been receiving the same sort of, uh, the same sort of attention. So that's typically not the best sign. All right, back on to the comments over here. Let's see. Uh, Clubber Styler says, sup, man. Hey, what's up, Clubber Style? Uh, using 2050, 100, and 200? Yeah, pretty much, man, pretty much. Um, per, per, uh, pretty much, man. Um, I, you know... Uh, I, some, sometimes, you know, I, I switch them to the fibs, essentially, you know, you're 21, you're 55, and then the 100 and the 200. Sometimes I use a 144, sometimes I use a 377. Sometimes I'll use, you know, some lower ones. I use all different sorts of strategies, but when I am doing streaming, yeah, typically, typically those are my, are my default inputs. All right. Uh, DJ Meat says, read the finished chat crown, get the mermaid. Where, where is it, man? I, I can't see it. Uh, it's, it's, it's disappeared from my, from my visual view. And unfortunately the mermaid is at work right now. She's not here right now, unfortunately, guys. Otherwise, uh, otherwise you'd be hearing her saying all sorts of uh, Finnish V2s and Satanas and whatever the fuck else they say. They have the Finnish people have the funniest sayings, by the way, guys. They always say Satan's cunt is is like their is like their swear word of choice when something goes wrong. It's like, <laughs> and then, and then like, they'll say like your face looks like an elephant's cunt. It's like whoa, that's aggressive, man. And I do apologize about the language, but god damn it, man, go to Finland. It's a good, it's a good time. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, Zoran says, um, uh, 90% of Bitcoin trading volume is in Tether. Why is that? Where is USD on exchanges? Um, well, you know, you, I mean, your exchanges with, with USD and Tether, they, I mean, they're pretty, they're pretty synonymous in general, man. You know, you, you, you compare like Bitfinex to something that trades in dollars like GDAX. And I mean, yes, of course, Bit, Bitfinex does a lot more, but they, you know, they're, they're comparable in a way. Uh, same thing with Bitstamp, th same thing with Mex, you know, it, it's, uh, I wouldn't worry about that too much, man. At the end of the day, I, I really don't, you know, I mean, it's, it's just, I, I don't think it's one of those things worth worrying about too much, to be honest with you. Um, uh, Gino, Gino Dahl says, hey, uh, hello, first time here from Melbourne, Australia. Well, God damn it, man. Welcome. And I want to personally welcome you into this channel and say, what's up, Gino? Nice to meet you, man. We do these live streams every day. So, uh, so, and, and, and please do know, please do understand that this is an open discussion, open conversation. So say anything and everything. All right. Have you heard of uh, Banka? They have no competitor. Can you, can you give your opinion, please? Uh, probably a shitcoin. It's, it's, I've, I've absolutely, I've never heard of it in my life. I have absolutely no idea about it. I don't know if you're, if you're new into this realm or not, or if you've done your research, but, uh, but let's see, let's see if we can bring up the chart. If it's not even on trading view, I'd say it's probably, yeah, it's, it, it looks like it's not even on trading view. Um, and, unless if it's a stock, like, please do let me know if this is a stock or if this is a, uh, or if this is a cryptocurrency. Um, but if it is a cryptocurrency, probably a scam, probably, probably garbage. Um, if it is a stock, well, then we can look at it. Um, but yeah, man, you know, in general, my default answer with these things, and please do not take this personally. It's, it's not an aside at you at all. You're probably, you're probably a great person. In fact, I know you're a great person because you're fucking here. Um, but, but with that said, man, with that said, uh, most altcoins, most, most of anything not named Bitcoin, save for maybe a handful of things are, are scams or, you know, or may, maybe not a scam, but you know, they're just, they're, they're never going to be successful. They have absolutely no fucking way of doing whatever, whatever they claim. And you can, you can basically, you know, write them off as, as one of the dot coms that failed, you know, back in early two thousands. All right. Uh, back on over here. Um, let's see. DJ meat says, uh, USD is a bigger scam than USD, USDT in my opinion. Uh, fair enough, man. Fair enough. You know, um, uh, USD, I mean, USDT, and, and there, there is something to be said about that. You know, the dollar versus tether. They can, you can both print them at will, and they both get printed at will. So fair enough. Patrick says, that's uh, that's why I always have stop losses. Yeah, indeed, man, indeed. You know, guys, if, you know, uh, I, I, I actually, if you're not familiar with who I am or what I do, I actually do do this, actually do do, I actually do this as as a living. This is, you know, this is my my life, essentially. And, uh, and, and I don't consider myself a trader. I consider myself a risk manager uh, at the most, uh, uh, above everything else. And, and as a risk manager, I'm always thinking about what I can lose with the trade, um, as well as what I can make, you know, a good risk reward is, is the name of the game. Zoran says, why are we talking about USD? Uh, USDT is being printed for free. Well, 
USD kind of is too, man. Uh, Derek M, M says, to do tone bass, you got to plug... <laughs> Guys, <laughs> tone bass. <laughs> God damn it. I'm going to get into another uh, another World War Three discussion. Uh, Crypto Yenny says, man, the F word so much. I uh, have to unscribe. Well, fair enough. I apologize if it's not for you. Um, there is more family friendly, friendly uh, uh, presenters on this channel. So please do not take that as, uh, as a representation of this channel. And in fact, it might even be that I'm not a, any ever here ever again after that. So fair enough, Yenny. I apologize about that. But again, you know, uh, I, I hope that we, are, that we are all adults here. And more importantly, I, I want everyone to here to know that whenever I do use, uh, you know, foul language, so to say, it's never intended to be hurtful or harmful in any way. It's just my way of expressing myself because I'm a little bit, you know, lazy with using sophisticated words. So sometimes I'll just grab the first word that comes to my mind and it typically is fuck. So yeah. All right. Uh, let's see. Okay. A0128 says can't go lower than the floor. <laughs> yeah, fair enough, man. Crypto Yenny, maybe you should try the weight. <laughs> Teletubbies is a great channel. Just kidding. Uh, DVBNN or DVDBNN says, uh, Zorin, uh, just like the USD is. Yeah, there is something to be said about that, man. There is something to be said about that. Hey, Cinco, what's up, man? Long time no see. How you doing, Mr. Cinco? Uh, how is power looking? Okay, well, let's go check it out. Another, uh, another favorite shit cone of the past. And let's go, uh, let's go see how it's doing. How you doing, Mr. Power Ledger? I, I remember when Superman was big on this one. Superman. <laughs> Guys, this is pathetic. Motherfucker. Um, yeah, over here. Uh, Power Ledger. Power Ledger. Looking like we do have some sort of a uh, falling wedge, falling channel, whatever the fuck you want to call it, type consolidation. Typically a bullish, uh, bullish continuation pattern. In fact, you could say something like this. And this is why I don't like falling wedges because you typically do morph into something like this. But you did have an initial one being put in right here. You can see you break out of it right here, come back and test it. Pretty, you know, pretty, pretty common thing. And then blast back on and back up. Um, overall, at the end of the day, though, uh, you know, it's just it just morphs into like a bigger one. If you ever, if you ever, if you're under, if oh my god, crown! If you're ever wondering why, um, why I typically am uh, am skeptical about you know diagonal trend lines, it's because of this, and and, and that's what essentially you know falling wedges and, and any sort of diagonal type formation is is that they just morph into like a bigger version of it, and it just you know it's it's like is it really that helpful? Well, in a way, yes, but at the same time, uh, it's not how I want to be basing my decisions off of. So again, yeah, you know, you do have, uh, sorry, <laughs> the more important part of what you're probably interested in is right here. Um, we are, we are trading above this resistance right here. I want to see this daily dilly close above this area above, uh, let's call it 4,600. Yeah. 4,600 even, uh, would be good to me. If we can do that, then yes, your next big, uh, resistance is right around here. The, uh, your net, your next diagonal essentially right around 5,400. If you can break above 5,400, then maybe you do have another big breakout again. Uh, you know, 6,400 wouldn't be too hard to hold after that. But again, major, major, major major, 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 major point being made here. I don't want to see this thing, uh, you know, close any dillies ab uh, below 4,600. If it does that, then this thing will, you know, it just won't look as good. It'll look kind of like a failed breakout in a way. So yeah, back on to the, uh, hey, God damn it. Um, let me just, uh, how to do that? Uh, oh man, I just completely fucked up all my symbols. Oh, well, I'm gonna have to fix that later then. Ah, oh, God damn it. Sorry about that, guys. I do apologize about that. It, it probably annoys me more than it should, but, uh, but yeah, uh, just trying to make sure that everything is all nice and, uh, orderly over here as I do maneuver it around. So just give me one second. Uh, I do apologize about this. Let me just make sure that, okay. Finax is right there. Uh, is this stamp? Nope. Uh, this is stamp. All right, there we go. All right. Now I got it. Okay. That, that's good enough for me. All right, back now over here and back over here to the comments. Okay, okay. Um, all right, I see poor Hodler says, uh, did we have a rejection on the weekly fractal low formed on November 2017th? I have absolutely no idea what you're talking about. Um, okay, uh, all right. Um, so, okay, did we, did we have a rejection of the weekly fractal low formed on November 2017? Um, I'm not sure what you're referring to, but I, you know, if, if you're going with this, if, if you're going this way that, that I kind of think you might be, then I'd say no. In fact, um, in fact, what we have right here is, is kind of a continuation of what we saw in 2014 of the former, um, of the former market cycle. Essentially, we have this major cross being put in right here. This is your 100 exponential cross into the downside of your purple line, your 200 exponential right there. Again, a moniker and, and a signal of what the Boston algorithms are likely doing. Again, it's not some sort of fucking magical mystical adventure it's about it's about understanding what the bigger accounts are programmed off of and this very clearly tells us that they are intensifying their selling as you can see right here we have a big dump in price action consolidate pump back to your yellow 21 dump back down a little bit lower pump back up above your yellow 21 reach for that green 55 pump or dump back down and are playing right back back here again now keep in mind this is within the context of a rising channel bear flag okay 
Now, why is this relevant? Why, is, why should I even talk about this uh, at all? Uh, well, right over here, we have the only other time that this cross has ever happened in Bitcoin's almost 10 year history We're going on right here. Your, 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 your cyan going to the downside of your purple. Again, a moniker of the bots and uh, in, in the algorithms programming. And we have a very similar price action. We have dumped, consolidate, pump back up to your yellow 21, dump back down a little bit lower. It's more aggressive in 2014, uh, uh, given, given that. And then we pump back up above your yellow 21, reach for that green 55, dump back down, find your secondary low, your local low near the, near the body of your former low, and then pump back up to put in the bull trap of death before we uh, sell on back down very aggressively to our all time low right here or of that market cycle i should say so and also keep in mind you know we we did put in a a uh, a bear flag you know rising channel consolidation right here as well so even though it was a bull trap and it did look you know pretty aggressive right here um we never got out of this formation actually so that is a little bit a uh, little bit concerning indeed so again um are, have we rejected have we rejected um do we, you know is playing this out actually no i'd say that we've we're actually kind of uh <laughs> we're we're we are scarily still following it pretty damn close and again historical analysis is not a one-to-one -one thing i don't want to make it sound like that because it is not and that's extremely misleading when other analysts do that what i do want to be clear about is the way that these uh, these these oscillators and the way that these uh these indicators and exponentials kind of interact with each other are something that can play out very, uh, very similarly over time, because again, it goes back to programming and the way that, you know, bots and, and algorithms, you know, just handle this sort of, uh, this sort of information. Um, on top of that, you know, human, human emotions, as always, guys, it al always comes back down to human emotions, which we've been kind of anatomically pr uh, programmed with ever since we became homo sapiens or mo uh, anatomically modern homo sapiens. Um, so again, that's, you know, hundreds of thousands or millions of years of, or whatever the fuck of conditioning, which goes all the way back to your goddamn lizard brain. So it's pretty damn hard to get out of it unless you're some sort of monk in over there in uh, in China. Um, but yeah, man, that's kind of why I do say that you know these these market cycles do have a way of playing themselves out over time. Um, at the end of the day, at, at the end of the day, guys, um, you know I, I've noticed these sorts of market cycles have great confluence with each other over time. Whether it's you know equity options, where, which is where I come from, whether it's commodities, whether it's forex, whether it's magic internet money, human emotions do rule the day. At the end of the at the end of the uh, at, at the end at the end of the con conversation. All right, sorry about that, guys. I, I'm just getting back to the comments over here again. If I do miss your comment, it's not deliberate. I'm happy to read it. Just just please repost it as as soon as it does uh, disappear from visual view. I can no longer uh, I can no longer access it all right back onto the comments uh lando says be sure to sub to both of us yeah man of course of course i do appreciate that as always guys hopped on crypto is a great scene i love being associated with them and uh and yeah it's it's it, they, they have they have some other great content providers over here as well gino says ta on kin all right that sounds like a command but we can do that okay ta on kin uh, Kin BTC. Let's see. Okay, it's not even coming up right here. So I'm gonna guess that it's a complete shitcoin. Uh, no, I mean I, I do apologize for using that word over there. Um, but yeah, it's not even it's not even hosted on TradingView, unfortunately. So I can't really look at it, you know. And if I did look at it on some, on some other venue like Coin Market Cap, it's just not responsible. I'm kind of like flying blind at that moment in time. So I hope that you do understand. It's just it's for the best that I don't look at it as it's not hosted on our uh, on our trusted platform over here. DVD says Zorin, uh, if you love USD so much, why are you here? Uh, do you know why people invest in gold? Uh, if you bought one dollar of Bitcoin in Albuquerque and sold it now that one dollar is worth one one dollar and uh, fifty percent what i'm not sure about that uh more than one all right oh yeah it's it's it's, it's worth more than oh okay gotcha uh, uh one percent and a half um more than one one dollar fall i mean we don't have to we don't have to fight against which which one's the bigger shit coin right now <laughs> Uh, let's see. Rocky says, Ryan L watch crown show when, uh, when I was on it. Yeah, definitely guys. Definitely. Um, if you are interested in the, in the underlying fundamentals, Rocky, uh, Rocky Plumbo over here, uh, under the name Bitcoin ascent, who he trades by, uh, was on, was on my personal channel. Um, and I hope that this is okay that we talk about this here, but he, he essentially went, did a full on fucking master's course on, on, you know, all these all not all these altcoins, but, but essentially like the underlying technology going below these things. And he can really, he really has a gift in explaining these sorts of things to people like me who don't understand and don't have like a programming developing background and, uh, and it really does put things into perspective for, uh, as to why Bitcoin has such a major advantage in, the, in this realm. Okay, Leet Run says, bit late for the stream. What's up, Leet Run? How you doing, man? Uh, didn't notice you stream on a second channel. Uh, what do you think about long at uh, 6350? Uh, wish you a nice day, mate. GG, G-R-G-L, G-L. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Actually, was just in a little bit of a long. Um, what do I think about it now? So so here's the thing. I'm always thinking about where would I be managing risk if, if I did enter right here right now? And if I did enter right here right now, well, the place that makes most sense is right here if I am looking for like a short-term trade. Um, so I'd be managing my risk at about, you know, 60. 
63.45. So is, is is that acceptable risk reward for you? Well, you know, it's it's only like five bucks away if you enter at 63.50. So I mean, not bad, not terrible. It's definitely uh, it's it's definitely you know one of those uh, it's definitely a reduced risk trade. So I, I like that. Um, but you know, there, there 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 there's nothing saying that we can't go lower. I mean, in fact. In fact, we've been kind of sitting in this consolidation range for quite some time, and you do you do want to start to see it show some signs of uh, of building momentum to the upside. Until that happens, I, th I you know I'd rather be just trading the the breakout right here rather than um, rather than uh, looking for. Um, you know, trying to trying to just find a support just now. I did take a trade earlier right around here, but then I got out of it as uh, just didn't really like what I was doing. And and honestly, at the end of the day, man, I'm on, you know, I'm on live stream right here. So I got to be a little bit careful. OK, uh, stay hydrated, bot. Everyone drink some goddamn water. Let me uh, let me drink some myself, actually. Oh, that's good. Good old H2O. It's good for you. OK. All right. Um. Let's see. Okay. Sorry. Just uh. Uh. Where's Mitch? Ain't seen him in a while. Uh. I don't know. <laughs> I don't even know. I, f I keep on hearing about this Mitch guy, and I've never even seen him in my life. Where are where, Matt or <laughs> Mitch? Where are you? Uh. I believe he has left to do his own thing. Oh well, fair enough. There you go. Uh, he's over on Matt Beasley's channel. Uh, channel now. Uh, you can search it in the search bar. Well, there you go. Land Lando himself has confirmed it. Uh, DJ Meat Popsicle says, "Wow. Uh, as." Uh, wow, as he is, he still on YouTube. Uh, Lando, thanks. Uh, Gino, uh, Gino says TRX. Yeah, we can go look at TRX really. Qu or, well, we actually we actually already did look at TRX, but you know we'll look at it one more time just for you, baby, just for you. Okay, uh, TRX on uh, on Trex over here, and or actually no, 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 sorry, we need to look at uh, Binance. They actually do have the most uh, history on this one, and we already have it charted out there as well. And the way that I look at TRX is that you know maybe we did put in a falling wedge consolidation coming off of here. Again, I really don't like trading wedges, but we did. If we are, we did take it out right here on good volume. I do like that, but we are still being held by this resistance right here, your your purple 200 and this horizontal level, which really should be more like this, right around 550. So as long as we're living below 550, um. I can't get too excited about it. In fact, even if we took out 550, I can't. I still can't get too excited about it, as you do have resistance pretty much all the way upwards and onwards here. Your next area would be 600, but you know that's that's a good little short-term trade if it does play out. Um, above there, you know, you do have this this horizontal level right here. Um, so yeah, some some like this overall. Uh, but 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 ugh. but at the end of the day, you know, I'm always watching what Bitcoin's doing, and if Bitcoin takes a step up, TRX likely will as well. If Bitcoin takes a step down, well, TRX probably goes. A lower as well so again that's kind of what i'm looking at over there trx must hold this area right here if it does lose 500 satoshi then this thing is well the next the next big support under that under 500 is 420 and below that is about 330 so just be aware of that you know always be aware of your risk but yeah it does look like it might be turning the corner over here um lower time frames do look like are, are showing a little bit of upside perhaps as well Okay, back onto the comments over here. Uh, let's see. Lando says, "Yep, definitely stick around. Crowns a breath of fresh air." I M H O. Well, thank you, man. I do appreciate that. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes I can rub people the wrong way. I do understand that. I, again, guys. So I always want to be very, very vocally, uh, vocally clear with this. That um, that none of my language, none of my you know behaviors are intended to be offensive to anyone in particular. Unless if you know, unless you're just being a fucking dick. But well, at which point? I mean, what's even the point of being a dick back? It's just like, all right, <laughs> all right, regale me in the comments again. It's good. It's good for my health. I'm like bad man i can take it uh <laughs> silly uh we'll soon we'll seduce you soon enough dj <laughs> gotta love it man uh patrick says where is the best place to learn how to manage risk um I probably I, I probably shouldn't talk about it here, but uh, but 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 hyped on crypto does have their own technical analysis program. Um, I'm not really uh, I don't really think that I'm uh, or I'll, I'll just leave it at that. Yeah, they they I, I believe that there is a link in the description of this video. Please do you know check it out if it's for you. It's for you. Then uh, but you know as always uh, you know that they, they, uh, there's always other resources around if you do search around. But uh, but yeah, I, I think they probably have a great uh, a great little system going on. All right, this is Crown. He's got a channel called called Crown's Crypto Cave. We will get you a link. Okay, thanks. Yeah, man. There you go. All right. Um, yeah, there you go. Land Lando's got you, Mr. Patrick. Lando's got you. Uh, the good old triage. Yeah, there you go. Uh, some some good risk management. Again, guys, risk management is what can really separate you from being, you know, uh, like an amateur, you know, trader to someone who can do this as a living and be, and be consistent long term. As again, I do not consider myself a trader. I'm a risk manager. Is what I really am. I'm always thinking about what I can lose on a trade rather than what I can, um, rather than what I can gain. Um, I'm <laughs> DJ Meat says I'm Lando. I'm already seduced. Just getting sick of YouTube. 
YouTube not sending notifications about this channel. Uh, Lee Run says, awesome, mate. Thanks for your ideas. Hey, man. Nope. My pleasure, man. My pleasure. Uh, Lando, I can't get, get the link. Uh, it's truly it's truly vexing indeed. <laughs> you got to love Lando, man. Such a good such a good communicator. Uh, Lando, that link, that, that link works. Thanks. All right. Great. We got that settled. Good. Great. Awesome. Beautiful. Uh, Ken, we says, hey, Crown, you feeling sad? <laughs> you feeling sad for today? I'm feeling very sad for today. I got a good night's sleep. I finally got myself a fucking fan. <laughs> It's it's so needed, man. I never thought I'd need some sort of like fan or air conditioning in Finland, but it's like 80 degrees here right now, man. Trump's visiting, by the way, so, uh, so I probably will never see him in my in my life. But but my God, Trump and Putin are like a few blocks away from me right now as I speak. Uh, what's going down in that room? Nobody knows. But God damn it, I want to know. Uh, let's see. Okay, uh, he's gone. He's back. All good. Uh, okay. Um, sub, thanks. Hey, thanks, man. I appreciate that. Uh, hello, my friend, my favorite B Bitcoin ET. <laughs> you gotta love it, man. DJ Meat Popsicle is sexually identified as a Bitcoin ATM. If you do, if you are interested, or if you are a Bitcoin ATM yourself of any sort of gender or any sort of gender pronoun, please do hit my man up or my Bitcoin ATM up, Mr. DJ Meat Popsicle. He's a great, or it is a great ATM. <laughs> and ATM does not stand for what you think it does. Uh, <laughs> bad. <laughs> Silly, so silly. All right, so back now over here, we're still tightening up this range again. Um, a little bit of a consolidation here. You are getting some nice crosses on your lower time frames on your exponentials, so I do like that. I want to see now, though. I, I want to see the boss defend this and uh, and confirm it. And this will likely be confirmed in my mind if we start closing uh, Dilly's above 63.75 ish area. If we can do that on an hourly time frame, I think that we do have some upside here. Again, if we do break out of this area right here, uh, very clearly, uh, let's just put it down right here. Make do this on the hourly above 63. Let's call it 63.90 or no 63.80. Um, then yeah, there's really not much stopping us from uh, 63, uh, uh, 60 area, which is actually where I'm going to be having my next order. And I'll be looking for a scalp short over there. I'll be looking for a little bit of a scalp short, something like this. Um, about let's let's do like 50,000 contracts uh, selling short right around there. So I'm going to be on the offer side. And uh, and again, I'm just looking at this area right here. I have a nice horizontal resistance. So that's kind of what I'm going off of. Let's put on our volume profile and see, what, see if that, that, that agrees with anything. And it does. So this is what I'm looking at over here. Our volume profile does, uh, does suggest that if we do start breaking above this area right here, you know, good confluence with this horizontal area, there's really not much stopping us uh, to this next area right here, about 65, 70-ish area on, uh, on Finex, which is a little bit lower on max um if you're wondering where i'm getting that number from so yeah man uh z rex says if you click minus symbol by bitcoin dollar it will uh it will hide some shit yeah yeah i'm, I'm aware man um I don't want to fuck, fuck around with it. I don't want to fuck around with it too much as there is like a very special way I have to set up these um the the these charts over here so that it you know it makes sense on screen. Unfortunately, it's uh it's a pain in the ass whenever I switch anything around. So uh so so uh so yes, yeah, so unfortunately I can't do that at the current moment in time. But just kind of moving around. I'm going to go check out some other alts right now as, uh, as you know, it's always a good idea to understand what Mr. Buterol is doing over here. And Mr. Buterol actually does look like he's put in some good accumulation below this level right here. So again, I, I agree that Bitcoin's showing the same thing, you know, accumulation below that 6250-ish area. Um, and, uh, and Buterol did take off on this area right here. Buterol's next resistance is right around here, around 462, uh, 463 actually. Yeah, we'll call it 463. Um, but again, you know, in the overall grand scheme of things, is it really doing anything different? Well, not really, not, not really actually. In fact, we have, we have a, uh, we, we have a major bear flag, right? Uh, uh, you know, um, rising channel right here as well. Uh, so again, you know, Buterol and, uh, and, uh, Bitcoin in, in unison in a way, which is what I do like to see. I, I do like confluence between these two as, uh, as, as when they do start to line up with each other, you do have a high degree of playing out a, a very similar formation. So yeah, man, at the end of the day, um, as long, you know, the, the bigger picture for Buterol is that is, is, is as long as it's above 371, you can interpret this as, um, as consolidation, but, um, let's just kind of pull this out of here, but, uh, but if it does lose this 370 area or the, the, this 370, um, support area over here, then yes, this thing has a long way to go down, unfortunately, or fortunately, if you are short. All right. So back now over here to the, uh, to the cone and back over here to the comments. Okay. Uh, let's see. Um, sorry about that. Uh, crown, you're lagging. All that for oh, you motherfucker, DJ Me Bob School. You know what? I've fallen for that before. I've fallen for that before, sadly enough. Um, but yeah. Ah, <laughs> oh, so mean. So mean. 
<laughs> Kenwe says, feeling more bullish. Alt's in green and too many shorts. Uh, guess Alt's showing the way. Uh, did you look at, at the yen yet? Yeah, I mean, let's go look at the yen. And by the way, I do I do think that we have some upside here most more than likely. Uh, let's go check out what, what Japan thinks. Japan has been a uh, Japan has been a light in the dark, so to say. And Japan looks a lot more like a bullish consolidation right here. This, uh, If you want to call it an ascending triangle, you can call it an ascending triangle. I don't care what you, what you call it. But the most important part here is that you know, you've know you identified it properly. And, and the right way to identify this formation right here is uh is we have resistance coming uh coming rising around here and and resistance coming right around here and if we do break above this area right here 715 716 000 yen then yes you know same same thing as american markets or, or very 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 similarly to american markets there's not much stopping us from this area right here again we had good accumulation going on below this area right here 705 000 uh, yen and uh, now we're just kind of playing that out um overall though i want to see this level confirmed above until i get you know a little bit excited about a trade um, but you know, you, you are right. We had way too many shorts go up right near major support. A lot of people throwing up shorts right here and right here. Price action was, um, was, uh, what was right around here, I believe, or, or somewhere right around here. So these people are already underwater and they probably have stop losses right here at about 6,400. So if we do start trading above 6,400, it's very likely that a lot of people are going to start closing the, these positions. And, um, and well, when a short closes a position, well, they have to buy. Uh, so yeah, man, I do agree with that. All right, back on over here to the comments. Uh, let's see. Um, 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 um. Uh, peep NQ or ES Futures. All right, let's go check it out. Uh, NQ. Uh, whoops, that's BQ. Uh, Burger King. <laughs> it's a good one. Uh, BQ uh, Futures. And let's see, which uh, which one do you want? Um, I'm guessing you want on New York Merger Tile. Uh, so, so let's go check out this one right here. Man, you love the Futures game, don't you? Oh, man, these things barely trade. Look at this. This is a fucking daily, man, and it barely trades, barely trades. Gaps everywhere. Uh, we have to go to the weekly. And uh, you actually do have something interesting on the weekly. You do have a you do have good accumulation going on down here. You actually do have an inverted head and shoulders right here. Uh, let's see where the measure move does pop us out at because this does look right, so to say. This does look right. We don't. We can't see volume metrics here, so that's a little bit throwing me off. But it, it, if, if this were to play out, it does imply a move somewhere right around here, around 86 bucks and uh, 62 cents, uh, just this horizontal area right here which does you know it looks looks like a little bit of a uh, little bit of historical relevance now now here uh, it comes with this caveat i want to see it hold above this area right here as long as it's holding above 67 69 dollars and uh and 75 cents i think it's i, I think overall it's uh it's it's on the up and up um but uh but but yeah that's with the caveat that we must hold above this area right here 69 bucks and about uh 75 or 60 cents something like that let's see yeah overall I mean, it, man, this really throws me off with the daily just just looking like this. This this thing like does one trade a day. I, I'd be interested in seeing the volume on that. Maybe I'm looking at the wrong thing, as uh, that would be <laughs> that's just a headache, man. Um, okay, and also ES, yeah, we can go look at ES as well. Uh, you always you always got some good comments, Mr. Z Rex. It's always a pleasure going back and forth with you. So uh, what? Oh, sorry, what was it? ES was it ES? Let me just make sure. Um, uh, yeah, ES futures. Okay, uh, and whoops. <laughs> got to get back and over here and we got some futures uh so you're talking about the e-mini let's yeah let's go look at the e-mini this thing actually does trade so that's good yeah see this is a 30 minute on your e-mini so compared to the daily on the other one that we just looked at so the other one just barely even trades uh your daily over here, I think it looks good, man. I think anyone who's short, uh, you know, regular uh, markets right now, uh, legacy markets as we call them, is very, 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 very misguided. There's nothing bearish about this right now. Nothing bearish at all. And I'm sure people are pulling it out and they're saying, crown, crown, but look, you can just apply, you can just apply the, the market psychology uh, chart to this. Yeah, and it's like, yes, no shit. You can apply that to every fucking run up ever in the history of mankind. You have to look at these from a greater perspective and understand what a market shifting move looks like. You can't just blindly, you know, blindly apply something like that and say, oh, it's going down. We've already gone up too much. You know, it's no, 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 no. That's a very, 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 very naive way to look at it. In fact, I'd say this thing is hinting at a breakout right now. In fact, you actually did kind of just already break out. Um, we do have resistance right around here, 2875, uh, your former high, you know, just your, your, your traditional swing high. But overall... I would like to see more volume on this breakout right here. This is this is less than convincing on the volume metrics, but uh, but overall, you know, there there there's there's definitely more positive signs than negative signs. And more importantly, man, you can't you can't be bearish on this thing at all whatsoever until we start closing dillies below this area right here, below twenty six thirty five. If we can do that, then yeah, it's time to uh, time to not be so goddamn bullish. Um, but but in the immediate term, time futures uh, looks good to me, man. And I really think that people who are you know saying that we're gonna crash in the in that sort of realm are very 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 misguided at the current moment in time and uh 
Yeah, there you go. All right. Uh, back onto the comments over here. And uh, let's see. Let's see. Uh, he, 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 do it. Do it. Please do it. God damn it, DJ Me Popsicle. <laughs> LL, the good old Alt F4 re reload. Yeah. <laughs> Alt F4 to receive gold. That's right, guys. Alt F4 to gain 5% happiness in your life. <laughs> Watch me just pull out my hair as my computer shuts down. LMA, Lamo, I tried. Gold and silver. Uh, yeah, what is what what tickers do you want do you want to look at for, for gold and silver? I'm guessing XAG and XAU. Um, but I'm actually used to I actually used to make markets in equity options for, for GLD, your gold ETF over there. Uh, so 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 I am kind of well versed in different um in in, in different uh underlines for that one, as they are several, right? Uh uh poor hodler says, What are your thoughts on Ethereum Bitcoin? Okay, let's go check out the Ethereum. Ethereum Bitcoin, um, uh, the, the, the Ethereum Bitcoin, uh, oh, so, sorry about that. You, you said NQ, not BQ. I apologize about that, but, but let's go look at this just really quickly. Okay. So Ethereum Bitcoin over here, um, looking good, man. A nice little short-term breakout right here, uh, above this, above this area right here. We could actually raise this up to your 200 exponential, which I do like. Uh, you can see that this former this former support is turning into resistance as we go along here. But again, you know, I'm not I'm not too concerned about it just yet. You did get you did get this breakout right here. So again, as long as we're living above 709 or just se or, se or 710 um, Satoshi, I, I think that is okay. Actually, in fact, I'd be looking a little bit higher. Uh, we are so showing some signs of uh, of bucking this trend, although we do have divergence on our oscillators. So our oscillators are saying that this move is getting a little bit overextended here. Um, but I would imagine that we probably do have. We, we do have another move in this one left and, and I'm not saying that based off of you know anything crazy or anything like that it's just experience over here um, and, and I know that that's probably not the best explanation for something you know I'm sure people would be looking at this and saying hey we got a rising channel right here and you know you're right you are right um, the volume characters would be wrong for this but I do think that you know your next big resistance would be right around here around 723 and a half ish some, something like that right around here this purple line um, but yeah you are getting some divergence on your oscillators and uh, that's typically a sign that the move is losing momentum and could could be reversing uh, soon speaking of i'm going to go back over here to bitcoin and let's see what we got going on over here um yeah, it's st still just consolidating a little bit again at the end of the day anytime that we look at an alt cone you have to just realize you know what, whatever bitcoin does altcoins are gonna you know uh, amplify uh, whether it's up or down all right um okay nq not bq sorry about that man sorry about that z-rex all right nq nq futures uh over here eq okay yeah e mini futures gotcha and uh, on the nas and uh what do we got going on over here wow these look way man these look significantly more bullish um than uh than the uh, than, than, than than the other ones that we just looked at over here um Oops, that's not what I want to do. Let's let's put this on right here. You did just get a breakout right here. Um, you you do have you do have a lot of divergence on your oscillators over here. But this this is that's actually not the right way to look at your oscillators. The uh, or or sorry, expecting reversal is not the right way to interpret your oscillators in this sort of market cycle right here. This is just extremely bullish in the way that I look at it. You know, you you had your divergence play out actually right here is is where you had it play out. Then you came back down to your neutral zone on the RSI and then pumped back up, getting a breakout in the process. So that's actually quite quite um quite uh strong um in my opinion and uh and, and, as, and as long as we're living above this area right here as long as we're living above you know 7100 uh this thing looks extremely good to me extremely good actually um so again, we're, we're we're back to using our exponential as support for our for our RSI over here. So again, man, I, am I am I bearish on this? No. As long as we're living above here, I mean, you can't be fucking bearish on this. I mean, you can't even get you can't you can't get bearish on this thing until we start closing weekly dillies below here, below below sixty three uh, eighty ish. You know, there uh, there you might actually have something. But right now, you just got a major breakout, man. You just got a bra major breakout after resetting that RSI. That's the way that I look at it. In a bullish market cycle, when you come back to the neutral zone in your RSI, that's you, you actually probably have a good trade on your hands more, uh, more often than not. Okay, back onto the comments over here. Uh, I would not trade that crap. You know better. Yeah, I do know. I was like, man, D-Rex, what the fuck? But, uh, but yeah, uh, all good, man. All good. Don't worry. I'm not going to judge you anyways. Even if you do want to look at a shit cone, I'll still look at it for you. But, uh, but, 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 uh, but nice, man. All right. So back over here, crown new chart in the cave. Okay. Let's go check it out. Uh, let's go see what DJ me pops was, uh, brought up for us. Now. <laughs> oh, this is a very good chart guys. This is, this is a very highly sophisticated chart. Look at this one, guys. This is your <laughs> Roger Ver is going to be mad about this one. <laughs> um, yeah. 
<laughs> I mean, <laughs> do I believe that this is going to happen? No, I, I, I don't. But um, but yeah. And, and also, re, uh, keep, please do keep in mind that um, that BitMEX does not have that much price history going on over there. Uh, let's put I'm going to put this back over here. I do like that chart, but God damn it. Do I agree with it? I'm not I'm not quite sure about this. Let, let's go look at some hopium, though. I want to look at some hopium for you for for, for everyone here as uh, as this has been kind of spewed about by the by the parabolic traps of the world. Um, in fact, Parabol Travs needs to be on my couch. God damn it, I've completely neg uh, neglected him. But everyone's been been look, been pointing towards the uh, been been. Po uh, ugh. Sorry about that, this, guys. It's embarrassing when I uh, when I stutter all the goddamn time. But uh, but everyone's been looking at the uh, the the quarterly um, hopium chart over here, which is which we just printed an inverted hammer dilly over here. We're gonna be reversing and going on back to all time highs, fifty thousand and above in no time, guys. Well, not so fast, not so fast. This is not your inverted hammer dilly that you're looking for, like from a picture perfect standpoint. And to that to that point, first things first, you don't have that much volume on it. This is why I don't like it too much already. And second thing, second, you don't have any sort of reversal dilly information at all whatsoever until, and this goes for just about anything, until you see follow through. And you don't have follow through until you trade above the high of this dilly right here, which is coming in around 99.48 and 98 cents on Bitstamp. So until we actually take out that high, well, you actually do not have a reversal in place. And and this is just, you know, it's just another dilly in in in, uh, in in the midst of things. So so yeah, I think that that's extremely misleading when you got people like Parabolic Trav saying hodl, we're going back to fifty thousand, or going, we're going to fifty thousand maybe, um, because it's not it's not quite what the that that's not what this is suggesting just yet. In fact, it's not suggesting anything like that at all. And, um, all it's suggesting is some severe divergence. Going, or, well, is that really divergence? Not really. All right, we did just uh, cross back down in our stoke over there, so fair enough. You know, keep that in mind. All right, back onto the uh, lower time frames over here. As I uh, put back on these um, these trend lines over here, let, let me go. Let me go over here to uh, to to Mex. You know what? I'm gonna do another silly trade right here. I'm gonna put in an order for uh, 50, 55 bucks, and uh, and this is what I'll be doing right here. I'll, I'll do forty thousand contracts off or uh, uh, bid at uh, fifty five bucks right here. Whoops. What's going on? Oh, wait. <laughs> That's what I... Uh, sorry. Good thing they have fat finger protection over here. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, 63.55 right there. 40,000 contracts offered. More importantly, though, more importantly... Oh, sorry. That's my Poloniex. <laughs> I have, like, a shit coin account on Poloniex, which I which I loaded up with, like, less than a Bitcoin. There you go. <laughs> if you ever want to look at it. Um, and I'm, like, I'm, like, losing money in there right now. Jesus Christ, crown. Um, so, over here... More importantly, where would I be managing risk at? Well, I'm going to be going off of this yellow, uh, this yellow 21 exponential right here. So if we do start closing a 30 minute dilly below this, uh, below about fifty dollars, and I'll take this trade off. So it's about five dollars risk on this trade. And uh, oh, it's actually sorry. Um, I need to get over here to Max. Oh yeah, we are on Max. Okay, great. Um, so so if we do if if we do close a 30 minute dilly below this area, then yeah, I get out of this trade. But I do like these crosses on your exponentials getting over here. If we do um, if if we do see this take off, I, I I like this trade, man. I really do. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm looking at over here. Again, fifty-five dollar bid, and uh, you know what? We can just well, can I move it up? Yeah, let's let's move it up just just a smidge over here. All right, and let me get back onto these comments. <laughs> good, good, uh, good charting over there, Mr. DJ Meat. Hey, Christina Black, what the fuck is up? How you doing, Christina Black? Pleasure having you here, the queen of altcoins. And uh, let's see. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Rocky says Ethereum is such a stream, a, st a steaming pile of crap. Uh, try starting, uh, try, try starting up a new node. Their blockchain is already uh, is already so big, the node will never sink. Thanks to very important projects like CryptoKitties. Yeah, man. At the end of the day, by the way, guys, if you're not familiar with Bitcoin Ascent, that is Rocky Palumbo, a goddamn Bitcoin legend, an expert in actually understanding the, the underlying technology. And uh, and you know, fundamentally, that is pretty much what I hear from a lot of the people that that do understand their things or do understand their shit. So to so to say within the programming and developing world um as for myself you know i'm just gonna be parroting what those people you know what those people say but i've done my research into those people so i'll trust them <laughs> is typically what i'll say hey there we go i'm filled all right so more importantly now we got to go set up uh how do i get out of this trade if it goes against me well Again, below here, I mean, really below here, about 46 bucks is where I need to get out of it as, uh, as it's no longer a good idea. And I'm just going to put in a, um, a stop limit at, uh, let's, let's do 45.5 and I'll do uh, 46 right here. And uh, just pray to God that it doesn't, get, that it doesn't hit me down at, um, 
uh, while on stream over here. Oh, and look at that. I could have got filled out at, at 40, uh, 54 bucks. God damn it. <laughs> Splitting hairs on this. But again, this is, uh, th 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 this is why, you know, you know, I got to be a little bit more careful on stream. And again, this is kind of more like a boredom trade. You know, I just, you know, I, I, I see very little risk in this trade as, you know, it's only about $10 down until I take the, this position off. And at the same time, you know, I do feel like we might be gearing up for a break here. So I'll, I'll take that. I'll, I'll take that uh, $5 risk for, you know, I'm, I'm looking for about 200 bucks right here. 200 bucks all the way to 65, uh, 65, 50 a share. Is what I'm thinking. All right, back now over here to the comments. Uh, let's see. Uh, where, what what did I chart? My magic line? No, DJ Me Pop Squad. I just showed you. I just showed your highly highly sophisticated chart over here on the uh, over here on the stream. And now you haven't even seen it. Why? <laughs> How dare you? Um, okay, back onto the uh, comments over here. Uh, <laughs> don't forget crypt, crypto titties. That's what we need on. That's what we need on the blockchain, guys. Proof of. <laughs> Can I say this? P O P, <laughs> proof of womanhood, um, <laughs> proof of lady boy. Uh, what did I try my magic line? Uh, Rocky says Ryan L. Litecoin will probably be a smaller and smaller fraction of Bitcoin as time goes on. Yeah, and again, guys, if you're if you're looking for a better explanation or a more in depth explanation, Rocky Rocky very very lovingly did a um uh, a, a a a joint stream with me uh, a few weeks ago under his uh, under Rocky Palumbo and uh, and he went all into detail about all this kind of stuff right there and then. And, uh, and it was just absolutely beautiful. So if you're interested in, in learning more about that, definitely check that stream out. And uh, and, and actually, you know, soon I, we should do another one soon, man. Um, you know, if, if you have some more, if you have some some new happenings in the Bitcoin space, and let's definitely uh, let's definitely talk about it, man. Let's definitely talk about it. All right, back on over here to the lower time frame. Still still just consolidating this area right here. Not not too much to be uh, speaking about, to be honest with you. Again, a little bit of boredom trades here and there. Maybe I need to go something like this. You know, maybe I need to be able, be a little bit more lenient with this position right here. In fact. It might already be bad, be a bad idea. You know what? I think yeah. I, th I think I might need to move this down actually. And this is this is the problem with it really is you know you keep on moving these things down and it just becomes a fucking headache, doesn't it? So yeah, that's what I'm gonna be going off of over there. And you know what? I'm gonna take this off and I'm gonna monitor this by hand, do it the old fashioned way, as I am pretty comfortable doing it that way. But again, you know, you do have your tr your 10 minute 100 exponential coming right around here. Let's see if this does indeed hold it up. You know, which which trend line will we obey? This is why I don't like uh, diagonals in general. Um, but you know, it's uh, until it's until it's broken. It's, you know, you can still make trades off of it. But again, it's you know, you got to be very 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 quick if you're going to be managing risk along these areas, as uh, it can get away from you extremely fast. So don't take this as like any sort of you know as like trade of the month or tra trade of the year material. It's certainly not trade of the year material. It's just like taking a pot shot back at a at, 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 at a very low risk trade because you know again if i do take a loss on this trade it's only about ten dollars i can take a ten dollar loss you know plenty <laughs> well you can't take it for t you can't take it like a million times but you can take it you, you can take enough ten dollar losses until you find you know a, a real winner uh so yeah all right back on to uh the comments over here whoops just brought up my email that's not what i want to do and over here okay uh crypto titties <laughs> proof <laughs> pop proof of uh <laughs> We won't go there. Uh, uh, Crown, let's do it. I'll be on on Yes for Motivation in 10 hours. Beautiful, man. Beautiful. I'm going to definitely check, uh, uh, tune in on that one, man. Hopefully, I don't think I'll be... Yeah, I won't be streaming at that time, so I'll be free to watch. So cool, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to that, man. I'm looking forward to that. But yeah, man, let's do it. You know, I don't know. Maybe next week or something like that would be good for me. Um, so yeah, cool. Very, very cool. All right, back onto the... Uh, oh, we're dumping a little bit harder now. Look at that. Oh, man. Am I going to lose everything on this trade? It might It might just happen right here, right now. Oh, we're losing all, all kinds of support right here. But again, that's why we wait for confirmation. As well, confirmation is the name of the game. But this this dump is getting more intense. Could it, <laughs> could it get any worse? Oh, my God. Another $2. <laughs> so again, guys, I, I need to be very, 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 very clear about this. Where will, where will I be managing risk? Well, if we close if we close below this uh, the, the, this green exponential right here the 6330 area I'll be taking off this trade and essentially what I'm what I'm uh, why I'm choosing this area is because as long if we do defend it then it's going to tell me that this cross over here is legit and if this cross is legitimate then I do want to be on the side on the buy side of the bots as that is what it, as that is as that is what it would suggest so to say all right back on over here to the comments uh oh no comments. Well, fair enough. Fair enough. All right. Okay. Back onto the uh, back onto the charts over here. Just just waiting for this uh, price action to fill itself out. Let's see. What else can we look at right now? Let's go look at Litecoin. We haven't looked at Litecoin today. Everyone everyone loves good old Litecoin, don't they? Uh, don't know why, but fair enough. Uh, Litecoin not getting the same sort of um, 
the same sort of love that Bitcoin got itself. Um, but again, you know, Litecoin agreeing with both Ethereum and Bitcoin that we're living in some sort of a rising channel, broadening wedge, a bear flag, whatever the fuck you want to call it. It doesn't, doesn't matter what you call it. Typically a bearish continuation pattern. But the big important part with this is that until we actually break it to the downside, there's no confirmation to be had. And we can whip all the way back up here to your to your upper resistance and still maintain the posturing of this, you know, bearish formation. It's not until we break above here, above about, you know, 94 bucks that we actually uh, that we actually have a change of behavior. Until that happens, this thing, you know, Litecoin is certainly the weakest of the big three, if you even want to call it that, uh, as we do have this measure move pointed downwards to about 56, 55 bucks. So, you know, be aware of that. Always, always be aware of your risk, right? Always be aware of your risk. Okay, back now over here. I'm, I'm almost $10 in the hole right now. Jesus Christ. It's going to be the worst trade all, all day. Uh, so, yeah, fair enough. Um, uh, let's, let's go over here to Max, see what we got going on. Max, Max wicking a little bit harder. Uh, let's see. Okay. Um, uh, Z Rex says BTS chart. Hey, yeah, man, let's go check out BTS, man. I actually was looking at that earlier, man. It, it had a nice little uh, move and it caught my attention. Um, not that I'm, you know, like a big fan of it or anything like that. But uh, but yeah, we got BitShares over here. Again, I don't know what the, the fuck this thing is. I don't know what, what the fuck it does. It's, it's some sort of like decentralized exchange, but it probably doesn't even have atomic swaps, which makes it pretty use useless anyways. Uh, but yeah, man, you did get a nice breakout right here. You did get a nice breakout. Uh, I don't, I don't, I, it's not the volume that I want to see on a breakout. So that, that does leave a little bit to be desired. But you can see here, maybe we are doing something like this. It, it is, it's very possible that we are doing something like this. And this would be, this would be a nice health, I mean, <laughs> healthy consolidation. That's, that's maybe not the right word to use. Um, but it would be a form of consolidation. Uh, certainly not my favorite. Uh, let's just move this over here. Yeah, some, something like this. And, and look at that. Our measure, or I did put in a measure move over here. I believe that I was looking at some sort of a cup and handle on your lower time frames, maybe. Yeah, yeah. So I looked at this, and this does look like a cup and handle right here. And the measure move does take us, uh, again, somewhere somewhere right around here. Let me just pull this back out. Go to your four hour. Yeah, it takes us right around here, which look at that. It's your, it's a nice horizontal and that diagonal uh, resistance trend line. So, um, so, so good confluence on this area right here. Again, you know, a, a, a little bit above 3050. Um, um, on Poloniex over here. Overall, though, I really wanted to see more volume on this breakout right here. I mean, your four-hour daily chart is is okay. You did just put in a little bit of a uh, spinning top, perhaps on on decent volume. So maybe maybe a sign of indecision, perhaps reversal uh, upcoming. So you know, always always keep that in the back of your mind. Um, so yeah, man. Uh, Kenwe says, "Where's Z price door? <laughs> where's where's the price door green line? What <laughs> mobile didn't show show it clearly? Uh, what what exactly are you referring to, uh, Kenwe? I'm not I'm not quite sure, man. I'm not quite sure." Um, Okay. All right. Hey, good night. Good night, Lando, man. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. It's been a pleasure speaking with you, man, as always. And I hope that you have a beautiful rest of your sleep, rest of your night, whatever you might be doing. Maybe you're sleeping. Who knows? But yeah, man, take care. Take care. Um, that down candle still hodls my magic, my magic line. Nothing to worry about. Which one? Which one? Oh, the one that the, the one over here on, uh, on, on Bitcoin. Well, let's go check it out. Ooh, we've rallied a whole dollar guys. We've rallied a whole dollar. Get ready. It's moon time in no, it's moon time in no time. Although we did just trade a little bit lower, so I don't quite like that. Uh, let's see. What are our higher time frames suggesting right here? What about our three hour? Okay, so our three hour is consolidating between our 55 and our and our 100 right here. So I, you know, it's not really telling us anything uh, just as as of yet, so to say. What about our six hour? Six hour, same sort of thing. You know, playing between the yellow and your and your green. Uh, what about your eight hour? Eight hour, eight hour looks okay. It's looking just looking like we're flagging out over here, which is what I kind of identify myself as well. And if we are doing a flag, well, we can make a measured move off that, right? And that would suggest that a measured move uh, off this right here would take us somewhere right around 60 or 64, 69 ish area. So about 100 bucks up from here. So again, that's that's kind of my first target I'll be looking at. I'll take off like uh, half my position around there. I think I'm 40,000 contracts deep on this. Yeah, so 67 or sorry, 64. 64, 5, 2, I'll, I'll do right there. I never want to do like a straight up even number, as uh, you never know. But yeah. That's kind of where I'll have my first my, my, my first order, and then I'm looking to get short around 65, uh, 53. Um, so again, you know, if I, I'm I'm also having my eyes on the uh, on on your yellow exponential right here, your 21 coming in around 64, uh, 25. As again in 2014, when we did put in this uh, in this similar formation, we did oh whoops wrong chart uh, back on over here. We did put uh, we did kind of base around this 21 once again. Um, as we did test it and then we kind of base there and then, and then bolt and then boot and then just boomed up. Uh, here's your big, oh my God, what happened here? Let's, let's actually like go into the price action on that day. I'm curious. 
I'm very curious and don't take that the wrong way. I'm not curious about that, okay? I'm curious about the price action. And let's just go back in time over here and whoops, I think I went a little bit too far. Uh, did I? No, I did not. Okay, we, we still got plenty of room. Sorry about that, guys. Uh, okay, here we go. So th this is the price action that I want to kind of uh, get my eyes on. You can see here on your yellow, uh, or sorry, on your eight-hour dilly chart, you did start to uh, you did start to put in this similar um, the, the, the similar flag formation on your on your lower time frames after having this nice rounded out local bottom right here correlating with this area. So yeah, you know you can imagine also you could do something like this, which is very, 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 very analogous to what we have going on in the current price action. Let me just get rid of both of these and do this on an eight hour. Cause again, you know, if, if you chart something on an, on an eight hour, you want to also make the, you, you know, you want to make, you want to look at it on the eight hour, if that makes sense. Like uh, my, my point is, is if I make a chart on like a daily time frame, I don't want to apply the same sorts of uh, trend lines to, to a smaller time frame. It's just not, not as applicable. And look at this, you know, you have a beautiful, a beautiful rising channel, beautiful bear flag, whatever the fuck you want to call it. Uh, it does look like that. Um, all, uh, a uh, just basically, um, uh, what's, what's, what's the word I'm look, that I'm looking for, you know, uh, coming to a conclusion right here on this major, 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 do you want to call it a shooting star? I mean, it's not your traditional shooting star, but it is certainly a, a massive, uh, bear wick, just, po just throwing you right back down over here, um, on heavy volume man, heavy volume too. And then we try to consolidate around here and then broke down. So that's really what I, what I want to have my eyes on. And uh, I'm just going to go back into the current price action and see what we got. And you can see, yeah, we're kind of, we're just basing around the, uh, the 20, your yellow 21 right there. Um, similarly to how we did in 2014 as well. So again, uh, exponentials are not, you know, it's, 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 there, it's, it's not a fucking done deal or anything like that. I don't want to misrepresent this sort of thing, but it does help me kind of understand and smooth out historical price action. Okay, back on to the uh, comments over here. Um, DJ Meat says that down candles to, oh wait, nope, just read that. Uh, uh, Bitcoin Ascent says Lando. That's cool. Let me know what you think. Yeah, man, definitely, definitely. Uh, Z Rex says XRP. Let's go check out XRP. Good old, the, everyone's favorite cone to hate, or is it? Or is it still? It's. I think it's like TRX or maybe Verge or like EOS <laughs> nowadays. Everyone's got a new shit coin to hate, don't they? Um, and let's go over here. I believe I already do have it charted on the dollar. Yes, indeed, I do. And XRP. Um, again, so XRP is right at resistance right here at about forty, almost forty-five cents. Um, you know, if, if the market does take a step up here, then it's very likely that XRP just, you know, catches wind and, um, and has a nice little rally up to this, uh, to, to your 46, 47 cent range, uh, over here. Um, but overall XRP is certainly one of the weaker within this market. So while it might benefit, while it might be the beneficiary of a Bitcoin, you know, pump and pumper, um, there ain't there ain't much uh, there you know overall it just doesn't look too good maybe we're doing some something like this where you know we're, we're we have some sort of no that's not even right is it yeah I'm just kind of just kind of drawing lines at that point but overall my point is with this is that you know you know while while it's, you know it's probably going to get you know wind if Bitcoin takes off here which I think Bitcoin might have a little bit of a leg um, it's you know if we if it, lo it looks fucking weak is my point sorry about this guys I'm a little bit uh, all over the place right here but if we do fail from this area about 40 let's call it 45 cents then there's not much holding it up from about 20 28 cents so again just be always be aware of your risk i i really don't like what i see here do you have any support along the way down i mean technically you do right here you could make the case right here but this is not strong support don't get me wrong this is not like uh th this is not your traditional strong support this is um this is i mean maybe a little bit of a stutter step maybe you'd play a bounce there i don't even know if you're gonna get a crazy bounce but at the end of the day it's not you know it's not what I want to be putting my life savings on, Mr. Brian Kelly uh, of CNBC. Let's go see what's going on over here. It looks like we just had a little bit of a move, put in a nice little hammer dilly right here. Seven minutes and 45 seconds to go on this uh, on this half hour uh, dilly candle. And let's see my position. Oh my God. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm losing to the end. Uh, yeah, but fair enough. Still still just kind of crawling away along, uh, along this uh, consolidation right here. Not really much else to say about it other than that. But uh, but it, but if we do start defending this area, this this 30 minute chart does start to show that the bots are defending this area. So I like that. I certainly do like that. All right, Kenwe says, uh, where was the green EMA on the third? Okay, oh, right here, workout and texting. So the green EMA on the 30 minute is actually kind of where we just you could you could almost count it as as where we just wicked down to. Technically, it's at 63.34 uh, and a half. But, you know, you, you can kind of see how I believe that we are defending this area. When you have a strong wick like this, you know, assuming that we do end here or higher, then, um, then, 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 then yes, that will tell me that the bots are likely, uh, they, they, they likely are defending that area and actually front running it just a little bit as well. Okay. Um, 
ascending ascending boner on this shorts chart. Let's go check it out. Do we have an ascending bonar on the shorts chart? Well, where where is the shorts chart? Oh god damn it, man! This is so annoying now. Okay, there it is. All right, there it is. Sorry, I thought I lost it. Sorry about that, guys. Um, oh wait, no, that's longs. Let's go over here to shorts. We have about twenty four and a half thousand shorts. Yes, we do have an ascending cock and balls. Of <laughs> Sorry, bad terminology. We do have an ascending, uh, we do have some ascending dillies over here on your uh, shorts chart. Um, but, 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 you know, um, yeah, I mean, people are putting up shorts right here. I don't really know why. Well, sorry, that's my Poloniex again. <laughs> fucking around in Poloniex. I don't know why I even do that. Um, <laughs> just wanted to trade an altcoin for once, just got bored and put it, put it, put like a Bitcoin in there and decided, all right, you're going to do something. Anyways, um, yeah, so our shorts chart over here, you know, bear, bears are kind of putting out a, a lot of shorts now at this resistance. So they are they are kind of, you know, counting on this area's acting as resistance, this horizontal area, which we do have plotted out right here at about 63.90. So so if price action does get above 63.90, I'm I'm going to be very um I'm going to be very confident that a lot of these shorts do, you know, do start to get either, you know, their their stops hit or or liquidated or something like that. As I do believe that we probably do have a little bit of a little bit of upside here. Um, but hey, you know, I'd imagine that if you are shorting right here, you're going to start to feel pain somewhere right around here. Again, you know, your, your, your local high is just your traditional swing high stop loss from like a retailer's perspective. They, they love that shit, don't they? They love that shit. And it's a very easy way for, uh, for bigger accounts to hunt that liquidity. All right, back on over here to the comments. Let's see. Um, can we check dent coin? Hey, what's up? Lazy Celtic boy, man. How you doing? My man, candlestick crown. God damn it. <laughs> What foul language we hear from these cave dwellers. Yes, indeed. It's a very, 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 very naughty cave. Do not come into this cave. It's highly, highly cautioned, and I do not suggest it for your mental health. Anyways, <laughs> if you do desire to step into this arena, well, we will go check out Dent right now. And it'll probably be the last one of the day. I think we're kind of running out of time here, as I do need to go to the, uh, whoops, I do need to go to the gym, and uh, I'm going to go for a new, a new uh, PR in, uh, in deadlifts. It's going to be really exciting as uh, I'm trying to build that up right now. Okay, so Dent. Unfortunately, Dent does not have that much uh, price action, so so technical analysis on something like this is just not really the best idea to do. Uh, I always want to be very, 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 very clear when I when I speak with people about this sort of thing, just because. Um just because you know the uh, the best readings I get from technical analysis, which is not you know perfect by any means on its own, um, is when we have a lot of price action, a lot of price history uh, to go off of. This one is quite new, so 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 take this with a grain of salt. This is the best that I can do right here. It looks pretty weak to myself. Um, we do have some bullish divergence, so that is suggesting that we have found a local low somewhere right around here. But overall, I don't like what this thing is doing. You know, until it gets above right here, about 65 Satoshi, it ain't you know I, it's nothing to, to write home about. Is what I'm trying to get out over here um if we do start closing two hour dillies above 65 satoshi then yeah you might have a nice little run up to this area right here right around uh, 73 satoshi that's a nice little trade to be making but again this area must hold you know 60 satoshi must hold otherwise this thing is gonna it's gonna have a hard time we'll put it that way you're not gonna have a good time or what is that south park thing like if you do this you're not gonna have a good time <laughs> jesus christ man sorry about that guys hey no heck how you doing man how you doing mr no heck um <laughs> uh let's see dent coin dent coin or ripple coin you got to pick one i think I, I already did ripple man i just did ripple and i just did dent so so there you go um i probably should use this time to go through the course but lives are more entertaining well fair enough man you know at the end of the day no heck um the 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 program is always there for you to go to go into reference and then the and then the discord and then and then these sorts of live streams are like for continuing education and clarification on that education so yeah man okay all right uh all right um what else do we got uh <laughs> uh take a look at ven i'm curious if it died already. <laughs> all right so ven actually does look pretty damn bad um let, let's go over here uh ven chain Okay, so then on Binance, uh, look at this, guys. Con confir uh, confirming above your last line of support right here. Yes, it, I mean, yes, you do have your measure move off this inverted cup and handle taking you down to about 23,000 Satoshi, a little bit above there. But is this strong support right here? No, absolutely fucking not. It's, it's, it's not strong support. Where it is semi-strong support is right around here, around 97.50 and below there, which is much more strong support around 6,000 Satoshi. Again, anytime you see this sort of rounding over uh, price action, that's that's indicative of distribution. And whenever you see distribution, well, you really don't want to be fucking long. It's, it's exactly what it sounds like. It's distributing those cones all over your bullish face. Um, so again, 
again, you know, d uh, taking out every sort of support on the on its way down. And we've, we've been looking at this for quite some time on, on my streams. Like, you know, once it broke this area right here, 43,500, it was it was an amazing short. You know, you had you had your inverted cup and handle being put in over here. It's not it's not a picture perfect one, but it does work. And uh, and we're just seeing that play out right now. Again, getting it getting very aggressive to the downside. Hey, and there we go. Bitcoin having a little bit of a rally rally over here. So let's see. Is it going to is it going to go down right now? I'm going to put it in the stock. Well, should I? No, nah, I, th I think I'll leave it like that. All right. Uh, let's see. Richard Peros or Per Tot says, hey, Crown. Hey, what's up, Richard? Good stream. Thanks, man. I appreciate that. Hey, thanks for joining us. Uh, I have 5,000 and looking at jumping on something. What do you what do you reckon? I would say, you know, if uh, are you, uh, well, here's the thing. I need to know a lot of things about you. Otherwise, it's going to be so damn irresponsible me to offer up any sort of, you know, talking points at all whatsoever. But what I need to know is, you know, what's your background? Are you are you new? Are you a new trader? Are you an investor? What's your time frames? Are you a long term? person? Are you a short-term person? Do you want to be a day trader like me? Do you want to be more of a long-term type, uh, type, 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 type dynamic over there? Do you have other forms of income? Essentially, like, do you have, you know, do you, do you, do you live and die off trading? Um, and, uh, and all these sorts of things without knowing that sort of information, I really can't, uh, it's just, it's just irresponsible of me to say anything. What I can say though, is that, is that in this sort of market dynamic right now, um, if you are newer to trading, uh, then, um, then, 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 then my best, 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 best thing to say, and what I really, truly stand by, is that this is not the best time to be entering in anything at all whatsoever. In fact, I would say this is probably this is the best time to be just learning. And if you do want to invest that money, I'd invest it in education. You know, if you do want to trade, maybe, maybe, and if you do want to learn learn trading, then maybe just you know trade with ten dollars. As if you can make money with a low amount with, with with a low account, then you can all then you can definitely make money with a high account. But it doesn't work the other way, or typically doesn't work the other way. Any Anyways, um, with that said, man, with that said, I would say invest in education, man. This is the best time to be to be uh, to be educating yourself because this is a very difficult market at the current moment in time. As we're we're no longer in a bullish trend. In fact, we're in a we're in a pretty damn heavy bear trend. And uh, and and you know you can make the game easy for yourself or harder for yourself. And I'd rather you know if you're newer, why not just make it easy for yourself? It's already fucking hard enough. Um, to that point, to uh, on to add on to that point, um, I want to also be clear in saying that we're you know everyone in this space right now is getting a goddamn master's education in market cycles as you know, everyone who entered in the last three years, all they all they had and all they had to reference was just bull markets, just going straight upwards and onwards. It wasn't until over here where you actually had to start thinking for yourself. So again, um, again, you know, th th this this truly is the best time to be learning, in my opinion, and uh, and I really do stand by that. Whether you whether you want to learn through um, through hyped on cryptos platform or whether you want to learn through uh, my personal platform, uh, that. That 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 is up for you to decide. Definitely check out the reviews. Definitely you know uh, ask ask all the questions that you need to ask, and then you can, only you can decide what's best for you. Of course, at the end of the day, man, only you can decide what's best for you. But that's kind of what I'd say to that point. All right, Lazy Cell Tech Boy says no. You gotta buy you gotta buy one dent or oh god damn it, Lazy Cell Tech Boy. I would say uh, probably Ripple, man. I I think Ripple just had they have better marketing, man. They're on TV. All right, guys, I'm at the end of the stream right here, and um. And I choose cyanide. Oh my God. Aggressive, man. Aggressive. Guys, I'm getting to the end of the stream over here. I'm going to start wrapping up the most important things to be aware of on Bitcoin. Then I'll leave you off till, uh, till, till probably tomorrow or, or, the, or, or a stream near you. I'll be on my channel a little bit later as well. Um, okay. So we have over here. We have over here what looks to me to be a bear flag. Now, even though we are in the context of a bear flag, going back on over here to Finex, um, it doesn't mean that we can't, you know, rally all the way back up to test the upside of this bear flag resistance over here. It's certainly possible. Now, by the same token, a bear flag, you know, typically breaks uh, breaks down to the downside. Not always, but you know, more statistically speaking, it's certainly more often than not. And uh, and, and we are still within the context of a bearish market cycle. Uh, it's not until we start closing daily dailies above this blue box territory up in here that that I start saying, oh, it's time to not be so damn bearish. We have a chain of behavior and maybe I can get bullish again. Um, but until that happens, we're well and far away from that. And we're still within the context of a bear, bearish market cycle in the in, in, in the smaller context of a bear flag. So it has a high degree of playing out. And if we do play it out, it'll be marked and confirmed by a daily close below this blue box area right here, about 6150. If that doesn't need to happen, then yes, I am looking towards that 44, you know, 4300 range. Um, by the same token, I do think that we are in for a little bit of upside here i am looking towards around 65 50 doesn't mean it's going to happen in fact you know there, there there are no promises in this game and that's essentially what a bear market is is and why it makes you know trading to the upside so difficult and that things can be sold into at any goddamn time at any moment so always have that in the back of your mind and always know your risk i'll leave it with that it's been an absolute pleasure speaking with you guys i hope that everyone has a beautiful rest of your monday drinking all the coffee that's needed as i've drinking enough myself and uh, and i look forward to speaking with you guys soon
soon. Take care, guys.